um, on, on, on Thursday. We accordingly have decided to ask them today to set the ball rolling, give uh, the specifics as I've indicated. We then suggested that the Minister of Finance may then have uh, the whole of tomorrow if that's, we think that might be appropriate for his days, but it also depends on uh, what he suggests. To have tomorrow to look at the issues, to discuss with lawyers, and then to come here on um, Thursday to present his side of the argument. This essentially are the matters and the conclusions that we came to yesterday when the committee met. Um, I got a call, Chairman, my, my friend who almost lost me some months ago. No, tap my back. We are not friends yet. Uh, maybe after this proceedings, we'll be friends again. So, um, it's my co-chairman. So, uh, Dominic, um, essentially, I've set up uh, what is it that uh, we agreed on yesterday. So, um, add something to it, and then let's okay. see where we we'll... uh, Thank you very much, uh, Honorable KT Hammond and the co-chair of this ad hoc committee. Um, I think the notice that has been given by the Honorable KT Hammond uh, captures succinctly um, the agreement that the committee has come to with respect to practice and procedure before the, commit before, uh, the committee for purposes of the hearing. As he has said, um, in terms of Article 82.4 of the Constitution, during the debate on the motion uh, for the vote of censure, the finance minister, who was the subject matter of uh, the motion, um, <clears throat> is entitled uh, to be heard during the debate. Now, Mr. Speaker thought that in the absence of uh, the finance minister on that day at plenary when the debate was taking place, it was only appropriate in accordance with uh, Order 106, one of the standing orders of uh, Parliament, to refer the motion to a committee of Parliament. Now, honorable members, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, committees of parliament are creatures of the Constitution. In terms of uh, Article 103, 3 of the Constitution, they may inquire into the affairs uh, of ministries, departments, and agencies and conduct investigations. I believe that it is in respect of this broad um, grant of constitutional authority that Mr. Speaker has asked this committee uh, to um, sit and hear out the finance minister in his defense. But before we do that, it is only important that the proponents of the motion, the movers of the motion, I would say that they are not accusers of the finance minister. They move the motion for a vote of censure uh, because in their estimation, and that is in the estimation of the minority, the finance minister was not performing his public duties, you know, as expected of him under the law and constitution of this country. That is the firm belief of every person who has, I mean, um, um, appended their signature to the request for a vote of censure, for a motion of vote of censure. And so um, they are not accusers of the finance minister. They just think that uh, the president should not be keeping him in place as our finance minister. And therefore, what we have set out is to give them the opportunity to avail the finance minister um, you know, the evidence that is being adduced against him in respect of all the seven grounds uh, that have been uh, stated in the motion paper. And then thereafter would we'll give the finance minister and all his lawyers the opportunity uh, to be heard in his defense. That is what the Constitution expects of us in terms of Article 82.4. And so today's procedure um, kickstarts the process of uh, you know, hearing the evidence uh, to be adduced by the proponents of the motion, and then we can have the finance minister to be heard in his defense. So uh, basically that's why we are here, ladies and gentlemen, honorable members of the, of the committee. So um, the finance minister has been invited. He is here present. And uh, we will begin uh, by introducing the members of the committee so that the general public, the Ghanaian public, will know who is on the committee and uh, who is uh, executing this duty on behalf of the Parliament of the Republic of Ghana. So, Honorable Katie Amon. Well, 
Will you start? Well, I guess you introduce yourself first. You just finished speaking, so it would be good if you introduce yourself. No problem. Um, my name is Dominic Akuritenga Ayene. I am the MP for Bulga East constituency and a co-chair of the, com the committee. I propose to introduce myself last, so if you go. Thank you, for, Chairman, for the opportunity. My name is Andrew Kofi Ejapa Mesa, the MP for Second and Deputy Minister for Energy, the member of the committee. Bernard here for MP for Akachi South and a member of the committee. Central member of the committee. Kwame Anime do entry. Asante Achim Central, the member of the committee. Senator Achiman Rawlings, Member of Parliament, Clotty Kole constituency, and a member of the committee. I am Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa, <coughs> Member of Parliament for the good people of North Tong in the Volta region, a member of the committee. I expect the committee to take parliamentary notice of my name and constituency. Um, yes, colleagues, um, we've just been handed over copies of uh, a letter which has been addressed to the clerk, um, and uh, it's from uh, the minister uh, in question. Uh, Well, I understand that uh, we left out our clerk. Um, Mr. Clark, you want to introduce yourself? My name is Camilo Poamang. I'm the clerk to the committee. To be introduced? Assisted by Dr. Ernest Dafo. He's the one distributing there. Is that it? All right, we'll go on with the letter. Yes, we have this letter from um, the Minister of Finance um, on the subject of this discussion. Um, I guess it is with a matter that uh, uh, both uh, Dominic and I have discussed. Uh, he refers to the letters uh, which have been sent to him, uh, dated respectively as uh, what, the 14th and the 15th, and uh, raises the matter of the specifics of uh, the allegations which are made against him. I don't intend to read the, the entire gamut of it. But essentially, he's asking for the particulars which we just um, um, uh, re referred to. He's wondering how is it fair that he's able to properly state his position when he only has the skeletal basis of uh, the allegations. So he accordingly claims our indulgence uh, for the full particulars of the facts in support of uh, each of the allegations contained in, the, in this uh, letter. And then, of course, the relevant supporting evidential um, uh, um, uh, document. He thinks this is not too much to ask for, and that it's in the interest of justice that um, the committee um, assists to this request. Um, considering all that uh, both uh, uh, Dominic and I have said, we, we really um, don't think there should be much of a difficulty. But let's see how we go, we go, we go by this. Originally, um, uh, the committee's view was for um, uh, the hearing to, to, to start and for the Minister of Finance to sit in, um, uh, and then thereafter we would have uh, ensured that the transcript of the hearing uh, was transmitted uh, to him and his lawyers. Uh, but uh, it seems to me that uh, it's a rather neater way, as suggested by him, that um, we ask from uh, the um, proponents of uh, the motion um, what is it that they have and which we can, uh, uh, in all fairness, uh, hand over to um, the minister and his team to consider, and then um, we can take it from there. Okay. Doctor. Yeah, um, the Honorable Minority Leader and the Ranking Member on Finance, are there any documents you would be relying on for purposes of making your case uh, for the vote of censure, the motion? Yeah, Chairman, Co-Chairman and very distinguished members of the to whom the speaker have referred the matter of censorship of the Honorable Ken Oforiata too. We are here. I've seen both of you use the word allegations. 
in many instances we are not just alleging i mean if i quote the president of the republic president nana dudankwa state that borrowing of 50 years and parallel record that is not an allegation just to draw your attention so don't reduce our censorship motion to allegations we take we no, take, no, we no, take, no 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 honorable take, member with respect let's get something right here no, um no no no, no 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 one second bear with me can you can you turn off the thing yes okay um on the on the thursday the 10th of uh, november uh, you had a privilege um to raise a motion on the floor uh, of the house you don't have the hands out here uh, it was, uh if it is here, yeah it's here but uh, 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 whoever was there heard you um loud and clear the motion was based on the specific issues one two three four five those are by any account allegations which are not fleshed by any evidential um, documentary evidence. I mean, not fleshed up. So they are essentially allegations. We are saying by, the, by virtue, by the provisions of the relevant laws, constitution and whatever, natural justice. In fact, I read yesterday, 1773, a judge said that even God gave Adam the opportunity um, to explain uh, himself when there was an accusation about uh, the... What, what, what was it? The, was it a mango or the fruit or whatever? Yeah, so in fact, so it is it's mere allegation as we see it. So if you have anything, please give us, don't it's, let us. It's appreciated. So, Chairman, I'm Haruna Idrisu, Member of Parliament, Tamale Saf, Minority Leader. No, I'm no. accompanied by the Honorable on, Atu Forson. On, no, um, excuse me. Yeah. First of all, there was a preliminary question about documents in relation to the letter. But when. Yes, but no, he can do the oath before that. Uh, chairman, thank you very much. I invoked Article 82 of the 1992 Constitution, which provides and gives Parliament the authority and mandate to call ministers to order by exercising the power of a vote of censure to which the minister has every right under the same article to debate himself during the debate. I'm not aware that the minister has been denied that opportunity by parliament or by me. So, Chairman, to proceed, I'm tendering in evidence parliamentary debates Thursday, 10th November 2022, in evidence for to guide you. Wait a minute. We, we will have make a, reference. Do we to, have a list? Do we have a list of. Uh, Chairman, know, I'm tendering you. my first okay. evidence. Okay. What, what, what do, we, do you have the a list? The answer by every record parliamentary practice is an authority to be relied on. We will make reference to the 1992 Constitution, the Public Financial Management Act, the Fiscal Responsibility Act, the Bank of Ghana Act and breaches their own, and we need evidence to support his breaches of it. We are simply advocating strongly that his performance is incredibly disappointing, that he's not fit to be no, but, 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 wait a minute. Did any of you buy Aruna, calm down. I mean, don't, sorry. We wouldn't allow this meeting to degenerate, um, to generate into any kind of fuss. Let, let's calm down. We know why we are here. You made a motion, you moved it on the floor, the speaker is uh, referred it to this committee. We, we got to be, be calm about it, and then uh, we aren't going to take political issues here. Let's deal with it the way it is. Yeah, we will let you. Our colleague wanted to make a point. His hand was always up. Uh, Chairman, thank you. Uh, I was wondering uh, how the proponent is beginning to tender when he hasn't even been sworn in. Uh, in any event, I thought that before we proceed on that route would make some determination as regards the request that is contained in the letter that the finance minister has submitted. We're going to, we're going to deal with that. Uh, I wanted him to settle down. You know, he was already half a but we're can going I, to deal I, with that. I, yeah, okay. Okay, so, you want to, yeah. so the question I asked was in relation to documents to be tendered. And the Honorable Minority Leader has listed a number of documents that will be tendered in support of the grounds if I may change the, in, the, in, in support of the grounds. 
Um, they seem to me to be, all of them, public documents. There are documents in the public domain. Are they not? Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just, just. I, I on that point. On that point. Yeah. Okay. I'm on about so, so sure. uh, microphones. I'm not sure if you are privileged to some information that we do not have. You are. What you just said. You said that the minority leader had actually given a list of the documents he no, no. intends. No, no. He, he, he was saying that I intend to rely on this. But what I will propose is that let the proponents introduce themselves with the greater respect. We have the finance minister here. We cannot assume if he's accompanied by anybody, let's have the introduction. And then after that, this letter, we can attend to uh, this letter, decide on this letter whether we are giving him uh, Thank you. Privilege. I mean, I think we, we, we already mentioned the fact that the finance minister is here. So, fact of his formal introduction, he is not here today to give evidence or anything. So, fact of his formal introduction, I'm not sure. But if you insist, um, the Honorable Finance Minister, does he, does he have to rise up or what, to be recognized or what are you suggesting? Well, sit down to be recognized or rise up to be recognized? Which one? Whether he he's here or... in uh, his own capacity or is accompanied by a lawyer we need to Finance know. Minister, um, uh, your presence is recognized. Who else is with you whose presence has to be recognized? I don't know. Well, I don't know who. Mr. Gabi Ochudako. Yes, hello. I see that you are around. Deputy Finance uh, Minister number two or three. Are you three or two? Or what? And then who else? He's a, she's a colleague, so she's... Okay, Abra, you also have to be... Yes, Abra, you are here. Does that satisfy that requirement? I, I'm, I'm talking to you. Uh, yeah, does it require, satisfy? Yes, Mr. Chair. Good. So let's get the, uh, the, the issue. You see, we'll do, we, the, the swearing of the oath and whatever would come when we get to the meat of it. There is a preliminary issue that we are trying to address here, isn't it? So, um, uh, Abra... Listen, you know, I don't stand on the protocols and all the honorable, honorable and those things. I don't deal with those. So what is Haruna is Haruna, you know. So Ato is Ato. That's how we're going to deal with this matter today. Why is Tahiri is Tahiri? Absolutely. Yeah, so, so, so that's how we're going to deal with this yes, matter. So, we can. Yeah, okay. You, so, you, heard, um, you heard our colleague uh, fairly yes, well. You were honor. rattling through it. I was confused myself. So what is the list? Honorable Atu will introduce himself and then start... I've already introduced Atu. Atu has been introduced. You know, so let's Let get on with it. Let him introduce himself, Chairman. For the Mr. Record. Speaker okay. said the other day that somebody could take on the contract and do it on their behalf. <laughs> you remember that? So Atu, unless, of course, you, you resist the fact uh, that I uh, did for Thank you, you very much, um, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, my name is Kassiel Atu Forsen. Um, I'm here with the minority leader. The document we'll be relying upon today um, for the purposes of the hearing will be one. Do, do you have statement. a list? Do you have a list? No, I'm reading them to you. You don't have a no, printed? I've already sent to the clerk. Um, uh, sorry. When uh, the clerk sent me a message via email and the minority leader, we responded yeah. via uh, the same WhatsApp and then gave the information. So I'm just reading. Okay, for the records, and it's important for the records. Mr. Chairman, please, um, seated right with the clerk, can he respond to that fact, whether he's received a list of documents to be relied on from the proponents of the motion? Thank you. It's very important. Yeah, the clerk. Yeah. Read what we sent to you. For now, I've... I'm um, yet to receive um, information regarding that. Um, we've had some discussions and I asked for it. But he promised something that I've not received, maybe. Yeah. Um, that is wrong. I sent to you, you sent us a letter via WhatsApp. And as part of the letter, at 1438 yesterday, I sent you four links. Four links. One is the 2020, 2020 staff report. I also sent you 20 of, of the staff report of the IMF. It's here. And the same 
1439, I sent you 2021 staff report of IMF. I also sent you 2020, 2019 staff report. I sent you the Fiscal Responsibility Act, 20, uh, Act 982. And then the budget statement for 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022. These are documents we sent to you. Um, you also asked us to write it formally. And what I sent to you is that since you, you sent to us via WhatsApp, I'm responding via WhatsApp with those data, and then when we come here, we tender them in evidence. So that was my response to you, and this is what the communication I had with you. So if you can read exactly the details of the communication that was sent to you. Mr. Chairman, it's, that is true. The account uh, on Ola 2 indicated, but if he will check his um, WhatsApp record, we had written formally to him in a letter, but because it was late, so we took a picture of the letter and sent to him. So he sent me a list of documents, and I remember reminding him that, yes, I have that, but because we wrote formally to you, it will be appropriate that you list those, all those documents in the formal letter, which uh, he promised to do. But in actual fact, he sent some of those um, items individually. Which so what you were requiring, waiting for the response in a formal letter? In a formal letter, yes. Because, because, because it's a record. We are here. We can lead, let you take record of what we intend to rely on. One, Chairman, 1992 Constitution, in particular Article 82, the PIAC Report uh, 2021. Uh, minority, the minority, leader, man, man, minority Leader. Minority Leader. Uh, uh, um, Aaron, on, on, I'm, I'm listening. Go on. I'm listening, Aaron. Chairman and colleagues, uh, we we'll rely on the Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2018, Act 982, in particular the section uh, 2 and 4, which emphasizes the vote of censure as captured in Article 82. We would also rely on the Minister's Budget Policy Statement for 2022 referring him through 2021, 2019. Then we intend to, as the Honorable Artu Forsen have said, reference the staff, uh, 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 the uh, International Monetary Fund Article 4 Consultation Staff Review for 2019, and we'll do so uh, request for disbursement staff report International Monetary so Fund uh, under the Rapid Credit Facility 2021 and then 2022 and then uh, breaches of the breaches uh, uh, of the uh, Bank uh, of I'm Ghana sorry, Act, sorry, Act sorry, Harun, 612 Harun, of 2002. Harun, Harun we're getting chairman. confused here. We're getting confused here. Calm down. We're getting confused here. Uh, Co-chairman, uh, don't you think a neater way of going about this is to give them some time? Um, to yeah, uh, to get in, um, no, some 30 minutes, um, uh, whatever we we'll do, so that we, we really understand. He's running through. I'm able, uh, only able to write article uh, what at 982, and then 2022, 2021. I've written budget against it. The red is doing the uh, speedy Gonzali. Uh, I can't get it. Yeah, yes, Atu, what is that? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman, no, Mr. Atu, Atu, before you come yeah. in, okay. Uh, two of my members have their hands up. The Honorable Okujeto and then Honorable uh, Zanato Rollins. Your members? Two of the members of the committee. <laughs> Chairman, Co-Chairman, if I can have your attention. It is important to acknowledge that the proponents are not refusing to make available documents that they will be relying on. The Honorable Minority Leader 
who is a distinguished leader of this house, is providing the list. I do know that at committee meetings and even at plenary, Hansard records proceedings. If you as chair cannot follow, the clerks and the Hansard department... That's rather patronizing. Would you want to rephrase it? The point is that we have a tradition in this house. I take exception. Would you want to phrase it? Rephrase it. Rephrase what, if I can be clear? If you as a chairman cannot follow it. All right, let me rephrase that. So if the chair is having some difficulty, probably with the pace, you said there's Speedy Gonzalez, if I'm quoting you uh, correctly. I'm only drawing attention that we have traditions and practices in this house. There's a clerk, there's Hansa department, the what is the use of the clerk, the hazard department, when the human uh, individuals who are supposed to be in charge cannot follow what is going on because of this the is a, This is a house of records. It's a house of records. The, the list, the human the beings, list the being provided. Human Chair, I, I don't think that we should be so rigid and, you know, uh, uh, we, are, we, are, we are... By simply it, it, asking it, it, him to put it in a, a it It's beginning way. to appear as if we that. want no, to just place no, impediments no, no, in the all, way... Not at all. Not at all. There, there are, if your view there, is that substantive we, are not, issues. we are not following and for that reason, yes. uh, what are the clerk and the hands that should take over? Hands mm. that should take over from the human beings? Honorable Katie Hammond, yes. you know that there are practices and traditions in this house. There are those whose duty it is, and they are paid by the taxpayer to record proceedings. Hands that department, the clerks at table. So the list they are providing. I mean, we got the point. We have we, 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 we have got, already we said we we've already said that we will provide the transcripts of today's proceedings to the honourable finance minister. So I don't think that no, we should I mean, the we should belabor the point. Actually, no, Let's make actually, progress. Listen, they've brought a letter in which they're making the same point that we ourselves have been struggling with. Yeah. How do we make sure that as fairness they got the evidence? The yes. letter is simply saying that what well, I want the particular, the specifics. Yes. And I'm happy they started that. telling us what is that they have. I've seen a bundle of uh, those things over there. Yes. But look at the way he was going on about it. Yes. Who can yes, you follow? Now you are referring me to recording. Yes. We'll get a hazard tomorrow. What we do today yeah. before the hazard comes tomorrow they, you know they record proceedings live there, there are traditions we follow in this house honorable let, let, let's, let's try again let's try again honorable, calm down honorable honorable kt there are hands honorable Senator rollins and then honorable Kwame you may do okay and then uh, honorable i here i here for first and then uh, honorable patrick Boma and mesa thank you thank you co-chair if i may I think the bottom line is you're asking for a list. They're here. This would not be the first time where in real time they can offer the list and it can be typed out while we're here so that we can proceed. We're already one hour behind schedule. This is something that's of great importance, not just to the House but to the country. So I think it's important that we, we facilitate the process as much as possible. Nobody's refusing to tender any documents in. So if you need a list now, that can be typed out and presented to you while the the, the, the proceedings can, you know, carry on. Honorable Kwame Yimidu. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, apart from we ourselves deciding and then now informing the proponents that we would want to have the list of documents that they intend to rely upon, the would-be respondent has also written that he would want to get a list of documents that they intend to rely upon. It is not for the respondent alone. We, as members of the committee, we must be informed of the documents they intend to rely upon. And I think this is right. If we need some minutes or some hours to actually put this list together, I think that the coaches put yourself, uh, put your hands together and allow them the opportunity to give the list out. It's not reading out the list. Yeah. We may okay. miss yeah. some of that. So if you have the list and the clerk wrote 
to Kwame, I think you've made you've made a point. Uh, that, that, that has written. They uh, should respond to that. Can can we hear the honourable here for on this matter? Co chairs, thank you very much for the opportunity. Co chairs, I I have read the letter emanating from the finance uh, minister making some requests. One, full particulars of the facts in support of the allegation. Then two, the relevant documents or evidence in support of the allegation. Order 82, uh, Article 82 of the 1992 Constitution is very clear that the minister during the debate must be heard. Now, opportunity is now being given for the minister to be heard. However, we want these allegations to be repeated before the minister. Whatever evidence that is available would be given. The supporting document would be made available and nobody is pointing a loaded gun at the minister to respond today. So the minister can take the evidence, can take the documents that will be tendered before the committee, look at it, and tell the committee that give me two hours, give me one day, give me two days, to take a look at the evidence and the documents made available for the committee and myself to enable the minister to be heard in debate of the motion. Honorable Patrick Boma. Chairman, I think on Bernard has made my point. Thank you. Honorable uh, Ejapa Mesa. Chairman, I, I have a contrary view. Because this proceedings that we are undertaking, like the minister rightfully indicated, is a quasi-judicial proceeding. Now, the purpose for which disclosures and exchange of documents are made is clearly known to all of us is to prevent the element of surprise. Now, I fail to see how the list that was contained in the letter that was submitted to the minister in themselves constitute facts for which he can be asked or called upon to respond to. We can take our time and read each one of them. So what the minister is asking for, and I don't think it's too much to ask, yes, people have said that why don't you do it after the fact when people, no, hold on, hold on, chairman. When the evidence has been laid, when the facts have been presented, and then you submit it to the finance minister for him to then come back and respond. He is saying, give me the facts and the evidence up front, consistent with my rights, so that I can prepare and come and face my accusers. I don't see that as an onerous ask at all. Honorable, uh, uh, honorable Minority Leader and then uh, Honorable Atu Forsen, um, the list that you've given, is that exclusive? Or there are other documents that you'll be relying upon? Is that list exclusive? Chama, if you can hear the Honorable Atu Forsen, we'll respond to your initial question. After him, we can be here to give evidence. Yes. The minister is here to listen to us. Yes. and to respond to us as appropriate, as you may make a determination. So kindly hear the Honorable to Forsen give you some of the reference document for your record. Very well. Thank you. Can, yeah, Honorable to Forsen, can you give us the, the, this in the list? Mr. Chairman, we have written the list here, and after I present it, I will give it to the clerk as well, so that I well. can share with you. Okay. Mr. Chairman, to start with, we will be relying on IMF staff reports from 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. Item two, we'll also be relying on the fiscal data from the Ministry of Finance website. From the Ministry of Finance website. They are a public and official document. And the IMF staff reports can also be found on the IMF staff Please uh, go, go on. Third, we'll be relying on budget statements from 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022. 
Number four, we'll be also be relying on the media budget statement <coughs> as presented to Parliament for 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022. Again, we'll be looking at the Auditor General's report for 2018, 2019, 2020. <coughs> we'll also be relying on PIAC report for 19, 2020, 21, and 22. Uh, 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 PIAC report, Public Interest and Accountability Committee, also established by an Act of Parliament. So we'll be relying on their report for 2019, 2020, 2021, and 2022 half-year report. We'll also be relying on the Fiscal Responsibility Act, 2018, Act 982. We'll be looking at the Public Management Act and the Petroleum Revenue Management Act as well. We also have the Hansards of Parliament that we'll be relying on. Uh, Hansard of Parliament, particularly the one on the 21st of June, 2022. We'll be relying on the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana and the Standing Orders of Parliament to make our case. Occasionally, we'll be also be looking at information um, that we have also been able to compile from an analyst from analysts, international recognized analysts on their website and will make reference to those websites. Do, do you have the yeah. specific websites? Um, a typical one has to do with the uh, Goldman Sachs website and we'll share the links with you. We'll be looking at Bloomberg website to be sharing some links with you, things we've seen Bloomberg publishes and um, we'll make reference to those ones. Every other document that we'll present to you will give you evidence of where this information is coming from. Thank you. And Chairman, we'll make reference to the address to the nation by President Nana Adudankwa himself on the economy on Sunday, 30th October 2022. His maiden State of the Nation address to Parliament would make reference to it. And the Petroleum Revenue Management Act will also be a reference uh, document. Thank you, Chair. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Finance Minister, I was resisting my colleague calling on you because I said that uh, you've not been introduced today uh, into um, the. Uh, you were only formally mentioned, um, so we can acknowledge your presence. But it's, it's an issue which, if you had come with your lawyer, and I'm beginning to see that a lawyer is raising his hand out there. So maybe I acknowledge you. Mr. Ochidako, yes, uh, let's, let's hear what is it that you want to contribute to. Uh, Mr. Ochidako. Um, if you can use the mic, because, uh, yes. Yes, you can sit. Mrs. Chairman, um, my name is Asao Chodako. I represent Mr. Ken Ferreira. Our issue is simple. One, per Article 23 of the Constitution, since it's a quasi-judicial process, our client deserves fair hearing. Indeed, in the event of matters not going well, he faces potentially the severest punishment that a minister can get, which is removal from office. So all we are asking for are two things. A whole list of the documents which we don't have physically, but that list will lead to an expedition which is wide, particularly when we have one week here. So I think that the first part of our request, which is full particulars of the facts in support of each of the allegations contained in the letter, must be first adhered to. Because, Mrs. Chairman, if you look at the first charge, if I may, it says, despicable conflict of interest, ensuring that directly, he directly benefits from Ghana's economic woes as his companies receive commissions and other unethical contractual advantage, particularly from Ghana's debt overhang wide. There are no particulars to this charge. 
we do not know all the hundreds of bonds that have been raised. We do not know which one they are talking about. If you go further, let me just skip to the last charge, charge seven. It says, gross mismanagement of the Ghanaian economy, which has occasioned untold and unprecedented hardship. If you give us PIAC report, if you give us uh, staff reports of 2018, 2019, 2020, with all due respect, it would take us about maybe two months to go through all that. And it would not be fair to the Minister of Finance to be ambushed and right here without any preparation to start answering questions. And in any Mrs. Chairman, if we do not constrain the accusers within the four walls of what they intend... I think he objects to being called an accuser. Well, um, how would you like Chama, to... Very, to very strongly. I mean, if I quote okay. the president when he himself says that the I economy do apologize. is in crisis, I do apologize. that's not an allegation. We are proponents. I do apologize. May I, may I just... May, so I do apologize. And then, Chama, if you can get one minute, you see... I, I, let me just finish. 21st like June 2022, I don't the minister get appeared and gave us evidence that Data Bank benefited, benefited 159 million between 2017 to 2021 from bonds issued and from borrowing. And then, Chairman, as I said, National Cathedral, we see a warrant signed by the minister for 142.7 million. We will tender that in evidence. Thank you. Mrs. Chairman. First of all, my apologies for, for calling you an accuser. Uh, Mrs. Chairman, all we are asking for, and if I just, let me just repeat, before we start this, this proceeding, all we are asking for in the interest of justice is that we should be furnished with the full particulars of the facts in support of each of the allegations contained in the letter. And then, the supporting uh, if, I, if I may, I may uh, chip in here. Um, some of the documents listed, in fact, all the documents listed are public documents. And, um, I mean, uh, some of them are uttered by the finance minister himself. All right? They are, they've been uttered or they are in the custody of the finance minister himself. Right? So, I would... Uh, um, disagree with you if you were to suggest that even in respect of those documents, the finance minister needs a lot of time to study them, especially when he is the author of the documents. And some of them, under the laws of this country, report. No, they are. So, the, yeah, can, we, can you land and then we can, yeah. make, we can make a ruling on this? My, my landed is pretty simple, Mr. Chairman. The documents are fine, but before we even be able to look into the documents, we want the charges to be complete with the particulars. Thank you. Okay. Now, the, the other thing um, that I want to point out, uh, both to... Um, the you i mean you and your client and as well as the Ghanaian people is that these are not charges that this is essentially a constitutional political process that grounds on a, in a motion cannot constitute charges and this is not a quasi judicial process in fact it is not an article 23 process because this committee is not an administrative body if you read the language of Article 23, it is very clear that administrative bodies, okay, must act with fairness and reasonableness in the decisions that they take. We are not an administrative body. We are a political body mandated with the task, you know, of investigating, making fact findings with respect to the grounds stipulated in the motion. That is the essential here to execute this morning. So I would uh, uh, advise that 
or caution against the use of charges. We are not charging the finance minister. And in fact, I do not think that the resultant uh, um, can we, document uh, can, be, can, forward, be, can be the basis of any criminal forward, charge in a court of competent jurisdiction. Forward, can we use the phrase allegations? They are allegations, aren't they? They are grounds. Grounds of the, grounds of the motion. Yeah, they're making allegations. All right. So we stick to the grounds. But we don't say allegations. We yeah, they're supporting grounds. No, 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 no. The, supporting they're supporting grounds. evidence for the grounds no, right. stipulated that's in the motion. So yes. supporting evidence for the grounds. The grounds, grounds stipulated yeah, in the right. motion. Okay, so but let's deal with this application. And then uh, we, we can... Mr. Mr. Chairman, I take your point. So let's stick to the, the word you use, fairness. Okay? In the interest of fairness, whether they are grounds or they are charges, it is important that we furnish the client with the particulars of each ground. That's, that's all. Before this process... That, that, that can be contested. So uh, I think you said enough. We, we can't contest it. By Chairman, whilst you are still there, did you read, did you read Seven for us? You said gross mismanagement of the Ghanaian economy, which has occasioned and told an unprecedented hardship. Did I hear that from you? Did you buy petrol on your way coming here or yeah on, on, on minority, on, on minority leader you are, don't you are cross examining the council i i think uh, we will protect him from such cross examination yes <laughs> all right okay. honorable council you are you are you are discharged from uh, you, uh, the seat thank you yes okay actually why not let him sit there in the event that we need him again does he have to go and come back there so he well do you, do you yeah, can, you can okay you can. he's conferring with his client all right. Mr. Co-Chairman, I, I think, sorry, yeah, what I think we're thinking about is to give you the opportunity to take the documents that you refer to and then specifically point to the paragraphs you're talking about. We're discussing, for example, uh, uh, what do you call it, a budget of about a thousand pages, for example. Where is he going to look at? You tell us that we'll be looking at budget of 2019-2022 uh, to a media reason. Well, read all of that. Oh, chairman, so let's think about is, one hour. Chairman, let's, you, no, you, 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 Ato, you aren't going to detect to the, 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 the big boys here, the two of us here, what time. We decide on the time. You don't decide on uh, the Mr. time. Mr. Chairman, just to tell you that we don't need one hour to do this. We this did, can be done in five we, minutes. We, we, we in charge. No, we we are the hour. ones to do the job, and we don't need that one hour. Ato, without us, you can't do this job. No, Mr. Chairman, just to tell you that five minutes is enough. Ato, you over Because route. we have it here. Ato, you over route. We need one hour. Uh, Chairman, but just to elucidate for your purposes, for instance, if we say to this committee that we will be making reference to report of Auditor General, when you give us the opportunity to speak to the Auditor General, we then, in our submission as we sit here, would have referred you to page 10 of the Editor General's report where the Minister of Finance Harun, reports two billion, Harun, wait, and then Harun. controller reports oh, three billion. Harun, wait a minute. Council, can you come over, please? With a variance, 
So we would have spoken to the issues based on what is contained in official documents. Kindly. Kindly. Yeah. Yeah. Approach. Ah, come here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, uh, what you requested you for, we have already have given it to you. Please, let's. <laughs> Honorable Atoforsen, I, I just uh, perused uh, through your list on uh, 12, which of the PIAC reports? You said? 2021, 2020. 2021, 2020, 2020, 2021. And probably the half year report for 2022. Okay. And then uh, half year report. Half year 2022. Council, are you ready to address us? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've spoken to the client, um, and we will concede to the guidance and wisdom of the chair. Okay. All right. That is fine. Thank you very much for obliging. Now, honorable members. Uh, Thank you. We will bring proceedings to uh, a start, no, not to a close, by swearing in the proponents of the motion. So, Clark, please go ahead and swear in the proponents of the motion.
Mr. Chairman, for clarity, um, I am not part of the proponent. I'm not a proponent of the motion. So should I still, because of the wording you use, am I still going to be sworn? You are, you are going to give evidence before this committee. So, but because of the wording you use, that's why I want to get clarity. Because for the proponent of the motion, it was moved by uh, the, you and seconded by Honorable Muntaka. The, so the motion, the motion, for all practical purposes, emanated from the minority. Exactly. And, and, and in fact, yes. I, I myself am a proponent of the motion, despite the fact that I'm sitting here. All right. Thank you. He wanted so kindly repeat after me. I I Haruna Idrisu solemnly swear swear by the Almighty God that the evidence I shall give that the evidence I shall give before this committee before this committee touching the matter in issue touching the matter in issue shall be the truth shall be the truth the whole truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth and nothing but the truth so help me God. so help me God. Thank you very much. Honorable Atu Fossi. Can you repeat after me? Okay. I. I, Kassia Atu Fossi. Swear by the Almighty God. Swear by the Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Before this committee. Before this committee. Touching the matter in issue. Touching the matter in issue. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Uh, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> Honorable Minority Leader and uh, Honorable Atu in the Ranking Member on Finance, um, you are aware that this is a referral from Mr. Speaker uh, pursuant to Order 1061 of the standing orders of this house. Um, you are also aware that on the 10th day of uh, November, that is Thursday, November 10th, 2022, uh, the Honorable Minority there did move his motion uh, before the house. And uh, that is the same motion that has been uh, referred to us. It's uh, reported in the Hansard at, page, at uh, paragraph 83 of uh, the Hansard of that day. Um, your duty here is to lead evidence before the committee in respect of each of the grounds stipulated in your motion. And so I will give you the opportunity, I mean, the chairs will give you the opportunity uh, to execute that duty. Um, I'm told that the Honorable Minority will first make a statement, and then the Honorable Atu Fosin will then proceed with leading the evidence in support of each of the grounds. So... Uh, thank you very much. Chairman, if I have your indulgence, understandably, I would like to proceed by tendering in parliamentary debate official report of 10th November 2022 in evidence, which is a motion I move, which was ably seconded by the Whip Donable Muntaka, expecting full debate. And Chairman, as I said, we are dissatisfied with the performance of the Honorable Minister for Finance, and we think that he's not competent enough to continue to hold office as Ghana's Minister Responsible for Finance, because, uh, Chairman, as we have said, so since I took uh, counsel on, on growth, uh, seven, gross mismanagement of the Ghanaian economy, which has occasioned and no, told no, no. an unprecedented hardship. I'm just taking one. Sorry, what, what are you doing now? He's making a statement, opening statement. Go on. Go on. Honorable Minority Leader, may you proceed? So, Chairman... We have grounds, and grounds, I'll just take two and yield the floor to the Honorable, Minister, uh, Honorable Atu Forsen, 
And as I said, uh, let me start with National Cathedral. I mean, Ghana, very respected religious country where there is coexistence, both Muslims and Christians alike. Nobody is against the present uh, promising and honoring God with a cathedral for the purpose of the expression of the Christian faith. But when public resources is used for that purpose, it needs us to uh, call into question. So the clerk of the committee, I just gave you a warrant signed by the Honorable Minister for Finance for some amount of money for the cathedral. And, and that's what you're holding, the first document. Just give me that. So I'll tender it, this in evidence and say that we are aware that by a warrant signed by Honorable Ken Ophoriata, Minister, 29th October 2022, an expenditure of 142,762,500 Ghana cities was allocated for the construction of the cathedral. Want to know when parliamentary approval was granted for this uh, purpose? And then also, I referred to the auditor, the auditor general's uh, report. Uh, and the uh, chairman, when we say, for instance, I just picked two. As I said, I yield to the honourable to Forson. Fiscal recklessness. Today, what is Ghana's national debt position? We have been told by the World Bank and IMF that our national debt stock exceeds 450 billion Ghana cities, as was inherited in 2017 in 120 billion Ghana cities. Servicing debt, the amount of money we now spend as a country to service debt at end of year 2021 was 37 billion Ghana cities, ballooning to 45 billion estimated by close of this year. This can only be as a result of irresponsible borrowing. You have borrowed. So wh wh where a, are we getting all these figures? Way. You rented a few figures here. Where are we getting them from? The, pres the minister's own statement and then from the World Bank. The, in fact, they, they are there. When yes, go, yes, they will yes. Find but the World Bank even says that by end of this year, our GDP was likely to be 99 percent of uh, uh, GDP. So I'll yield that. May I just end here. The honourable are too May, may I come in? And Mr. Chair, I'll be grateful if I could be directed on what of the points is he speaking on? Because I... Turn the thing down. Uh, we, we keep on pleading. We wouldn't allow this uh, meeting to degenerate. It wouldn't be fair. It would be fair. You should catch the attention of the chair. You raise the point. Let's be clear that we, we know what we are going to, uh, going to raise. We, we can't be cutting across like that. We discussed all of this yesterday. It can't be right. Yes. It can't be and, right. and honorable members, please allow the uh, proponents of the motion to flow and then note down any critical questions that you want to ask them. Okay? So, please. Uh, Mr. Co-Chairman, I, I, uh, Harun, I thought that you were starting with the National Cathedral. Are you finished with it and moved away from that? Yeah, I'm done. You're done with the yes. National Cathedral? Yes, I've given you my evidence on that. Uh, that is the, the document that uh, you threw? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, That's I'm sure you yourself, you pay for fuel, you buy fish. I don't buy, buy fuel, fuel so don't talk about me. I don't buy fuel. I don't, I don't have a left, car, I don't buy fuel. When we are here so. yeah, that there is excruciating hardships and people's real income have been washed away by inflation. And chairman, chairman, I'm on inflation. And on inflation, I'm not quoting any person but the president of the republic on his Sunday address to the country when the president himself uh, stated, and uh, chairman, with your indulgence, I quote, the whole world has been taken aback by the speed with which inflation has eaten away people's incomes. Economies big and small have experienced over this year alone the highest rise in cost of living over a generation, the highest rise in government borrowing, highest rise in go government borrowing. These are the worst of in over 50 years, the highest rise in inflation for 40 years, this inflation has contributed to the unacceptable hardships that Ghanaians are going through. And we are holding the Honorable Minister for Finance holy 
and solely responsible for that. The words of the president, I continue. The steepest depreciation in their currency to the U.S. dollar over the last 30 years, 2017, one U.S. dollar was to 4.2 Ghana cities. Today, one U.S. dollar is 15 Ghana cities. That has meaning for businesses in Ghana. The cost of doing business is unacceptably high for businesses. The pharmaceutical industry is complaining because it affects their imports and they are made to pay more. The depreciation of the city has affected the women who cannot trade effectively because they've had to lose. And lose because this is a consequence of their borrowing. Also, you now have what we call, as we reference Bank of Ghana Act. The Bank of Ghana has exceeded its emergency support and financing for government for 2019, 2021, to 2022. We'll lead the exact figures. But the law, the Bank of Ghana Act chairman that I may refer to, says that the minister is allowed to do up to 10% of previous year revenue is five percent i'm generous to even give them ten percent so if you have 90 billion uh, five percent of it would have given you 4.5 billion so if you spend up to 9.5 billion or even uh, you spend up to 15.9 billion that is in breach of the ghana bank of ghana act and that itself is contributing to the increase in inflation which is affecting real incomes so chairman let me at this point thank you for appearing as i quote the auditor general report and you see we are saying that the minister must give us data to rely on and i'm holding here the report of the auditor general of the public accounts of ghana general government for the year and the 31st of 2021 and i refer to page 10 Paragraph on annual budget funding amount reported by the Ministry of Finance itself amounts to two billion zero six one one two two six zero seven, whereas Control and Accountant General reported an amount of three point three billion, so a variance of one point three billion. Somebody must explain this to the Ghanaian public why so, you sorry, have this. Which one? <laughs> annual budget funding amount ABFA. No, no, that's in relation to which of the, um, the paragraph 23. Paragraph 23. No, paragraph 23. No. We observe significant no. differences in the revenue figures uh, Aaron, reported wait. by Aaron, the wait, wait, accountant wait. general. No, this is in support of which of the I call them allegations. I think Co-Chairman says we shouldn't say allegations. Which one? Uh, which of the numbered? Uh, Number four, and there I yield to the Honorable to force deliberate and dishonest misreporting of economic data to Parliament. So when you have him say two billion, controller says three billion, who are we to believe? Then the Honorable to force will come in and show you a graph to uh, expand more on four. So I yield to to force I'll come back again. I've referred to the Auditor General's report. I've made comment, and then uh, prices of goods. You said when you were coming, you didn't buy anything. You, you, you bought the petrol for me. Don't worry. You bought it for me. Thank you. Buy. Don't worry. You bought it for me. <laughs> okay. The Honourable okay. Atufosin, can we? Thank may you. we hear you? Thank Council, you, much. Um, you have an objection? Yes, um, Mrs. Chairman. The the list that have been provided does not include the audit, Auditor General's report. And this is the, the danger that we pointed out. If we are not careful, there will be surprises at every turn of these proceedings. And as we sit here, the Finance Minister of the Republic has a responsibility to be working on the budget, negotiating on the IMF program that the whole country is waiting for. And if we're going to stay here and spring surprises at every turn, Mr. Chairman, it may be difficult for us. Uh, uh, Honorable Counsel, 
Honorable Council, the, the um, Honorable Minority Leader did mention the Auditor General's report. I think it is, I mean, uh, that in the typing that there was an omission. It was mentioned to, it was mentioned to the committee. So, uh, please, your, yes. Chairman, I have a concern. And uh, if the counsel to the finance minister can give me his ear. The counsel to the finance minister, I don't know if you heard him. He's been telling us that the finance minister he has to lead IMF negotiations, prepare the budget, as though what is going on here is not important. Some of us take strong, strong exception. This is an important constitutional assignment, very important uh, to Parliament and to the Ghanaian people. Do, I, I think that such, well, that, well, such do expressions, I, do I, do I with all due respect, very condescending, and as do though, I, do I as though it, we are wasting their time. Do I take it's totally it that, unacceptable. Do I take it that that comment was posited in a specific context? I thought what it meant was that by maybe suggesting that we should go on a frolic of their, uh, their own to look for all this, why not stick us to the specifics? No. But we pointed it out to him that, well, I, maybe... No, Mr. Chairman, this is a very important can I, can national I, can I, exercise. Can I conclude? Yes. He thought that you were directing him to go out of the box, out of the contest, but we think we indicated to him that we wrote it down. I have it as a number five. And so maybe if uh, it is omitted on this... We Yes, yeah, so he, I, he, he I, has a valid point. But yeah. to add that, well, they, they have an IMF negotiations yeah, and IMF budget. As, important, if, but as if what's happening here is some well, circus. I mean, if respect. it was, it was suggested yeah. to them that go out and look for this, look for this, look for this, and he suggested it might take time of the IMF. Let, 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 it's all right. We can, uh, we can, uh, we, we can allow. No, Mr. We can allow. No, Mr. Chairman, he must uh, withdraw Mr. that. Uh, this is a very important exercise. No. No, no, no. I, I yeah. take strong exception that to that, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Well, no, I, I think I no, think no, I think Mr. the Chairman. honourable member has no. a very legitimate point yeah, I, I uh, like that. that has been made with respect to the importance of this exercise. That um, this is a constitutional exercise, a referral from the, uh, the Speaker of Parliament. Uh, the, the entire country, Ghanaian people, expect us to return a report to Mr. Speaker with respect to the grounds stipulated in the motion for the Honorable House to debate and to take a decision. And this is so important that we cannot, uh, you know, I mean, be seen to be trivializing it. So that is a very legitimate point. Um, yes, Chair, Honorable Member. With all, with all due respect to the Chair, I do not think that what the Council for the Finance Minister said is in any way condescending. Obviously, the statement that he made was clearly in context. Okay, you've served the man with a letter that says that he should come and respond to seven specific items. One, despicable conflict of interest, ensuring... Honorable, that, honorable member, no, you, don't, you don't need, you don't, no, no, you don't, you don't need to go through respect, all the seven grounds. No, honor, honorable, Fine, honorable member. Go through, but yes. let, me, let me make my point. And, and so if he appears before you and requests that these grounds that you've listed and submitted to him by letter does not disclose any allegations of facts for him to respond and then all of a sudden he's been given a list which in my view does not relate to any fact whatsoever and he's being called upon to Hon respond. honorable member he's please you are you are prejudging you are prejudging the content you are pre no 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 fact, no 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 you are prejudging the content please with honorable member you are you are, you are you are you are out of order well. you are prejudging the content of the documents to be submitted okay no 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 honorable member you are out of order can we can we can we listen no uh, honorable minority leader can we listen to the honorable atu forcing uh, council thank you very much you you can if you want to be conferring with your client uh, why don't you bring your client uh, which, which one Condescending. No, 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 no. Mr. Chairman. No, Mr. Chairman. No. no. no.
please, please Mr. You, you, coach, you, you were not oh. you were not happy with an expression I use, and I and I and I did what no, no, gentlemen no. I'd, do. I'd, no, no, I'd, I'd taking the the, the the time to explain. As far as I'm concerned, the statement was made in a specific context. You you giving me a list to go through my view, and uh, when I say my, I'm now putting on the shoe of uh, the of counsel on the other side. So, chair, you can't uh, make that point without talking about. The more important things you have no, no, done. No, no, no. So if you said that you turn all this at me and you uh, expect that when you also know very well that I've got A, B, C, D to do, well, bank this and this and that. I, uh, Mr. Mr. Ochidako, I mean, is it difficult for you to rephrase it? Oh, not at all. Not at all. Um, this is an important exercise and we're only asking for direction so that we can finish it on time. That's all. I think that's well said. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I will be um, concentrating on um, item four of the motion, five, six, and seven. Ground four. Ground four, five, six, and seven. That's my job today. So I, I, will, I, will, I will take you through one by one. Chairman, for I've set the tone. I will come back on every single issue. That's why I tendered my motion in evidence. I'll pick paragraph by paragraph, expand it, and provide material evidence. But I yield now to those other grounds. No, 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 no. no. Uh, Arun, I mean, you are confusing this, this, this committee. I thought you decided to take on the first one. Yes, I have. On, but you seem to be suggesting that you come back to them. No, the Honorable Atu Fosun will speak to the grounds he's mentioned. Uh-huh. And, then, and then, then what? At any time you need me, I'll come uh, well, back. Well, we need you. Yes. Uh, that's fair. I thought you of your own volition was going to force yourself back on us again. I've just ended in my motion and evidence. You haven't stated it yet. It's steady will provide you an opportunity to for hear us to me call more. you if we want to call I if we need so. you. Yeah, I that's fine. So. That's fine. If we need you. If we don't need you, we will say good afternoon to you. The Honorable Atu Fosin. Mr. Chairman, um, to start with, I will start with um, item four, where we have here written deliberate and dishonest misreporting of economic data to Parliament. Um, Mr. Chairman, you, we are all aware and we have seen that since 2018 government since 2018 has been misreporting economic data to parliament with the aim of misleading parliament and investor community the misreporting to parliament was mainly to inform parliament that the finance minister has complied with the fiscal responsibility act act 2018 act um, Act 982, particularly Section 7, when that was not the case. Mr. Chairman, if I may refer you to the uh, Section 4, Section 4. Mr. Chairman, if I may refer you to the Fiscal Responsibility Act 2018, Act 8982, Act 982. Mr. Chairman, um, the Section 1 of the Fiscal Responsibility Act, uh, which deals with the object of the Act, is clear. It says that the object of this Act is to provide for fiscal responsibility rules and to ensure macroeconomic stability and debt sustainability. One, two says that for the purposes of Section 1, fiscal responsibility rules shall A, correct distorted incentives, B, ensure fiscal discipline, C, prevent fiscal slippages, and D, improve fiscal and debt sustainability. So, Chairman, today our debt is unsustainable. And the key question everyone else is asking is that how could we have a Fiscal Responsibility Act with set of rules and yet our debt has become unsustainable? So I will take you through why we are where we are. So, Chairman, the Fiscal Responsibility Rule says that despite 
fiscal policy indicators stated in Section 16 of the Public Financial Management Act 2016, Act 921. The following numerical fiscal responsibility rules shall apply in the management of the public finances. Mr. Chairman, A, the overall fiscal balance on cash basis for a particular year shall not exceed a deficit of 5% of gross domestic product for that year. And B, an amount, an annual positive primary balance shall be maintained. Mr. Chairman, this is clearly the fiscal responsibility rules for the Republic of Ghana. Section 4 of the Fiscal Responsibility Act, Act 982, says that Parliament may, in accordance with Article 9, Article 82 of the Constitution, pass a vote of censure on the minister where the minister breaches Section 2 of more than one percentage point. The so Chairman, Section 2 says that the fiscal responsibility rules should not be more than 5%. So one percentage point in addition will mean you, any time you exceed it by 6%, a vote of censure may be presented to Parliament or somebody may trigger the vote of censure on you. May. The Chairman, again, Section 2 says that the primary balance must always be positive. So if you breach it by one percentage point, then obviously the vote of censure may trigger. What we have seen, what we have seen is that over the years, even though the minister responsible for finance has been presenting some economic data to parliament. In the year 2018, Mr. Chairman, you can see it on the board. Our minister responsible for finance and the government had said to parliament that the fiscal deficit was 3.9% of GDP. In fact, in the year 2018, the reason why they said it's 3.9% of GDP was that a key expenditure worth 8. 9.8 billion Ghana cities was excluded from the fiscal accounting. They, were tre they treated it below the line. And this has to do with the financial sector payment. So, Chairman, fiscal deficit simple means when your expenditure exceeds your revenue. Exceeds your revenue. Then you throw out the fiscal deficit. And the law says that any time you reach 6%, the vote of censure must happen. And this law was assented by His Excellency the President on 28 December 2018. So, Mr. Chairman, if you are to account for the 9.8 billion Ghana cities that they excluded and treated it below the line, the actual fiscal deficit for the year 2018 was 7.1% of GDP. Clearly means that the censorship motion in line with uh, Section 4 of Act 982 triggers. And this is exactly three days after the law was assented to by the president. And the law, Mr. Chairman, has no transitional provision. So, so three days, three days. It, the, the law was passed on the 28th of December 2018. And by December 31st, 2018, the minister has breached the fiscal responsibility rules already. So three days down the line. So, Chairman, if I take you to 2019 also, our minister had informed parliament that fiscal deficit was 4.8% of GDP. 4.8%. Again, he had excluded financial sector payment of 3.1 uh, billion Ghana cities. And also had excluded energy payment. Energy payment of 5.1 uh, billion Ghana cities from the fiscal accounting. From the fiscal accounting. So if you are to factor in all that, the fiscal deficit is actually 7.1% of GDP, same as 2018. At the time, the fiscal rules had not been suspended. Had not been suspended. And remember, the fiscal rules were suspended in the year 2020 when COVID came to our doorsteps. So at that point, the minister again breached the Fiscal Responsibility Act, particularly, particularly Section 2 and Section 4 of the Fiscal Responsibility Act. Mr. Chairman, uh, in the year 2020, the deficit was 11.7, he claims. But the actual deficit as reported, if you factor in all what they have excluded, is 17.2% uh, of GDP. The year 2022, 2021, the fiscal deficit as reported to Parliament was 9.2% of GDP. But the actual fiscal deficit for 2021 was 12.4% of GDP. 
So, Chairman, let me take you to the stage. Back, back the minister. The minister but fair to the minister before he continued. With 2020, he came for suspension yes. of the act. But I want you to follow the chronology of events. There were years he said, I'm suspending fiscal responsibility act because of the circumstance of the situation. Continue. But so, Mr. Chairman, he could legally do that. Yes. yes. In fact, uh, Section 3. Section 3 of the Fiscal Responsibility Act is under suspension of the fiscal responsibility rules. And so he could suspend it. He did not suspend it in 18, did not suspend it in the year 2019, but suspended it in the year 2020. And there are circumstances that you can suspend it. So he used COVID and suspended that. We all agree. But prior to that, he did not suspend the fiscal responsibility rule. So he fell and was in breach of the Fiscal Responsibility Act. Mr. Chairman, um, as I said, the minister excluded the following payment, and this was given to us by the Finance Committee from the fiscal accounting. And this is summary of 2019 energy sector payment against supplementary appropriations. The chairman, this is a document from the Ministry of Finance that they gave to us. The, uh, I have the document here, and I'm tendering it, um, obviously, as the ranking member of the committee. So I have a copy. I will tender it to you, but I'm referring to the whole document. So when I finish, I'll give it to you. Mr. Chairman, in the document before us, the document before us. Uh, can we start labeling this as exhibits? Yes. 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 Uh, so, yes, you're doing that, Mr. Clark. Yes, Mr. Chairman, they made certain payment where 5.1 billion Ghana cities energy payment uh, first to Ameri Energy an amount of 530 million second to Letasco Letasco 500 million AXA Energy car power million, million everything is a million car power 656 you have Sonon Asogli 519 million and then TMG Trustees Limited, uh, which is fuel from ENI Vitol, uh, amounting to 1 billion and 860 million. And then they pay Stratcom Energy, 631 million. GNPC for 2018 refund for heavy fuel oil, an amount of 86.4 million. Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Chairman, this gives you a total of 5.1 billion Ghana cities. All of this were treated below the line. Simple put, they did not include it in the expenditure to see the overall deficit for the period. So, Chairman. Wait, 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 bear with me. Can you help the committee by indicating when this particular yeah. um, uh, power uh, companies, power companies this, uh, what were they um, uh, installed? What were they installed in the country? Mr. Chairman, uh, my job is not to know what they installed, but I know the government of Ghana paid this money okay. and treated uh, it as amortization. That's uh, fine, uh, but it would have uh, helped us. Our okay, Mr. Chairman, just to let you know that some, most of them there are for the purposes of buying fuel and to power the power plant. For example, no, no, back to the back amount to that sir. was paid to Letasco is down, fuel. Calm down, to what I'm saying is that you say it's not your job, but I'm just wondering if you could posit it properly. Yes, you are concerned with the figures. I sitting here, I'm interested in when uh, these uh, equipment uh, were installed in the country. If you have no idea, that's fine. I have but no idea. I have help. no idea. Yeah. yeah. No, and, and to be fair to uh, the Honorable Atu Force, in the um, evidence being presented relates to payments that were made yeah. at a specific point in time. That my question was simply if he knew when this machine, uh, machinery um, were installed. Uh, if you don't know, I mean, that's fine. I, I thought some of them, most of them were installed uh, at a time when he was a deputy minister. But that's just yes, I, 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 I'm not by, an IPP expert. It's by the by, don't worry. Uh, I deal with numbers. I'm giving you the numbers. And the payments were not made at the time he was deputy minister. Mr. Chairman, these payments were made in the year 2019. Uh, so many years after I left the Ministry of Finance, this was yes, actually after made by you this had government. installed those um, uh, machinery. Didn't it? <laughs> so, Mr. Chairman, um, to take you through it, um, obviously, this was excluded to create impression that the Minister responsible for finance had actually met the fiscal responsibility rules. But Mr. Chairman, let me now refer you 
Let me you, now refer you. May, you may want to uh, no, I, I still tender. need the document. You still need it. Uh, I still need it. I have tendered the energy sector payment 2019 in April. Very well. But I have. I still need the. Okay, maybe I can tear it and give it to you. No, no. If if you want to if you want to tender it in whole, that yeah, is whole. fine. I will After you have finished, you can tender it to you okay. in evidence. Yeah. So, chairman, the um, next point had to do with the same misreporting to Parliament. I have with me the Article Nine, Article Four, consultation report from the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, dated December 2019. Uh, Mr. Chairman, let me refer you to paragraph 16. Uh, wait, wait, before you do, what, paragraph what, is 16. what is that? Okay, Mr. Chairman, um, Ghana is a member of the International Monetary Fund. Every country, IMF, every country that happens to be a member of the International Monetary Fund has to open their books once a year to the IMF to see the reporting of how the country's economy is going. Because, Mr. Chairman, the truth is, we're in a global world, if care is not taken and you allow a country's economy to crash, it will become a global issue for global community to take care of that particular company, uh, uh, country. And so the IMF, per their mandate, as given to them by the United Nations, is to ensure that once a year they visit countries that are members. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that every country is a member of the IMF. And then you, they will come and see your books and report appropriately. This report has to go through the IMF for. Uh, IMF board for approval. So, Mr. Chairman, in the year 2019, the IMF undertook an Article 4 mission in Ghana. And as part of the document that they publish on their website, and I've sent the link to this website to the clerk. I provided the link to the clerk. So, Chairman, paragraph 16, paragraph 16, page 11, page 11, paragraph 16 of the staff report um, uh, and article 4 says fiscal rules uh, under Ghana public financial management act fiscal rules could be strengthened box one it goes on to say that about 2.8 percentage point of GDP in financial and energy sector payments were recorded below the line in the year 2019 budget because the government considers the financial sector cost as one of an energy cost as debt amortization. Best international practices would include this transaction above the line. Best international practices will include these transactions above the line as they reflect either direct government obligation or government transactions state-owned enterprises. In addition, spending on roads into bracket cocoa board and potential infrastructure collateralization on bauxite export, Sino-Hydro, should be recorded in the central government budget. Finally, a former debt anchor targeted a sustainable debt to GDP ratio over the medium term could effectively guide the fiscal policy and reduce uncertainty above the debt trajectory. So, Chairman, no, the so, point... So we get the notes right. Um, the IMF is not by that saying that it was wrong what they did. They said that best international practices would have uh, ensured that it was done in a different way. But it does not say what they was done was wrong. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm coming there. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm building a point, so allow me to finish. When I build my point, you, you understand where I'm coming from. So, Mr. Chairman, this is the point in the 2019 Article 4 consultation. You come back there. You haven't answered my question. No, no, I'm, I'm building a point. So let me finish, and I'm sure when I'm done, you can. If you want to cross-examine me, you can. But I just want so that I don't lose my thoughts. So, Mr. Chairman, the... I won't worry if you lose a bit of it. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, the, the key point here is that an expenditure worth 2.8% of GDP was excluded from the fiscal reporting because government treated it differently, treated it differently against the international best practices. The chairman, expenditure of 2.8%. So in 
So, Mr. Chairman, if you are to factor that expenditure in, clearly the fiscal rules was breached. Mr. Chairman, the, the other point, the other point had to do with the fact that certain uh, payments... Donovan, two, four, did you say 2.8% of, of GDP? Yes. Of GDP. Yeah, of, of, of GDP. Okay. And I've given you the nominal numbers of GDP. Mr. Chairman, the key point also is that Sino-Hydro payment was also excluded from the fiscal reporting. Government treated it differently. And so even though the Sino-Hydro payment is due for payment, the debt repayment is due next year. Now, because of the way they treated it as if it's not part of central government debt, how are we going to service the debt? Because it's already not part. And if you use taxpayers' money to service it, the accounting will mean that you have not recorded the expenditure and now you are paying for something that you have not recorded. Clearly, this is dishonest and we believe that this shouldn't be the case. Uh, Chairman, after 2019, in the year 2020, in the year 2020, government of Ghana had gone to the IMF to get some loan. And the loan is called the Rapid Credit Facility. Rapid Credit Facility. And under the Rapid Credit Facility, before you go to the IMF, you have to give them the economic data. And I refer you to page three, page three of the Rapid Credit Facility document at the IMF website. At the IMF website. And page three, there is a box there called table one. Table one. The government of Ghana gave this document to IMF. The source is Ghana government authorities. So, Chairman, government has said to IMF that in the year 2018, the fiscal deficit was 7% and not 4.8% as they told us. So, in one breath, they had said to government, the parliament of Ghana, that it's 4.8%. In government official document, they said to us that the fiscal deficit, they said to IMF that the fiscal deficit, overall deficit was 7% of GDP. Acknowledging that the energy payment and financial sector payment were expenditure. The chairman, in the year 2019, they had informed IMF again in the uh, rapid credit facility that the fiscal deficit is 7.5% of GDP. 7.5% of GDP. Breaching the fiscal responsibility rules. This is what they gave. The chairman, I tender this in evidence. Tender this in ev evidence. And then the 2019 one. Now, I will take you to 2020 staff report. 2021 staff report. The 2021 staff report, staff, IMF staff report, also acknowledges that the fiscal deficit for 2018 was 7%. The fiscal deficit for 2021 is 7.5%. So clearly, the fiscal responsibility rules were breached in the year 2018 and 2019. So if you ask me... Uh, the, uh, the Honorable Atul uh, you've referred to two separate documents. Yes. Uh, would you want to tender them in evidence? Yes, I'm tendering all of them in evidence. Okay, so let, let them be tendered to yes. the, uh, the clerk of the committee. Yes, uh, Honorable Patrick Boma. You uh, have... uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm not done. No, I, may... I think he, he has a... I think it's very important to have those documents well numbered. Because the way, the way he's speaking and tendering in document, we need to have a clear view of what he's tendering. Um, the clerk was taking charge of that. Yeah, yes. You are exhibiting them properly, Mr. Clark. Okay, so... Um, we didn't hear you, Mr. Clark. Yes, we are doing that. So you can allay his fears. Yes. So, Mr. Chairman... The 2021 Article 4 consultation document uh, from the IMF also uh, in page 3, page 3 of the document also made this point very clear, that the fiscal deficit for the year 2019 was 7.5% of GDP. And the primary balance is 7.5% of GDP and not as reported by the Minister responsible for finance to Parliament, representing 4.8% of GDP. So clearly, it was breached. The chairman, the second fiscal rule has to do with the primary, uh, primary balance. We were told that 
under the rules, if you exceed the, deficit, uh, the, the balance by 1%, because you're supposed to be positive at all times, under the document that they submitted to IMF, the pari balance was negative 1.8. Uh, negative 1 .8. So there was a deficit of 1.8. And that is why we are saying that the train for the censorship motion moved in the year 2018. In fact, if we were to go by it, somebody could have brought the motion to censure the minister in the year 2018 or 2019 because he breached the rules. And, and, and uh, to my surprise, these are rules that were set by the minister himself when uh, this, this bill, he brought the bill to parliament for a reason. The reason is to ensure fiscal sustainability and debt sustainability. If you breach these rules, it has long-term repercussion on the Ghanaian economy. And today, we are seeing what is happening. So, Chairman, I tender this one to in evidence. I tender this one to in, in evidence. Chairman, um, I have said... You say, Mr. Co-Chairman, you see our handicap, even those of our city, you see our handicap. You tell us about the law, you tell us about the provisions, we have no capacity... No, I, I, I have copies ability. of the law I can well, give to you. Well, I, to, I can give you copies of the law. So that's the point that counsel for the finance minister raised originally. No, no, no. If we had acceded to that, everybody would have copies of what we're talking about. So we'll be able to put you on the spot if you are giving us a bit of fibs. Yeah. The, the uh, item on motion, um, on the motion item 5, deals with fiscal okay. recklessness. So, the Honorable Atufos, you finish I'm, I'm, with... I'm done with item 4. With item 4. Item 4. So, you are, you are now moving to item... Item 5. Item 5. Mr. co I think we should stick to the yeah. original plan. Uh, yeah. Our colleagues want to ask questions. You put all of them together, I think they might lose their uh, train of thought. Okay, so, so if you can ask questions on item, item, and then item 4, them, yeah. and then I move on to item 5. I think five that's a better way of going about it, yes. Uh, very well. Yeah. The Honorable Mesa. Chairman, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I want to find out from the Honorable Ranking Member what he knows, Dr. Albert Tunamama. Of course, um, Albert Tunamama works, used to work with the IMF in this country as the res rep, resident representative. So it's an IMF staff that oh. often meets the min uh, finance committee. Chairman, I want to find out from the Ranking Member again whether he is aware that on the 9th of May 2020, all these allegations that he has recounted were flatly denied by the said Dr. Albert Tumamama on joint news file. Mr. Chairman, I am making reference to documents published by the IMF board, official document. Tumamama is not the IMF board. He's not IMF. He's an individual who works with the IMF. His views are his views. I am ref my references are official document from the IMF, and you can get it from the IMF website. I'm not aware that IMF website is stronger than Joy News website. Uh, Mr. Co-Chairman, no. Uh, let's, uh, let's get to it. He asked a straightforward question. Are you aware A, B, C, D, yes or no? I think that's all he was asking for. No, he did, that wasn't his question. Yeah, his question better. was, are you aware that Mr. Ture Mama, whatever he is there, made this? Did you, did you, have you heard yeah, Mr. Chairman, I am not aware. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, indeed, the said Mr. Dr. Toma Mama was the IMF country rep for Ghana. And he was called on news file to respond to allegations that had been made by the Honorable Ranking Member and the minority respect to misreporting of figures that the finance ministry had presented to the IMF. And he was categorical that all the figures that the minority were alluding to were known to the IMF and that the government of Ghana had not misrepresented any figures to the IMF as he is alleging today. I put it to him. Mr. Chairman, um, I, I vehemently disagree with what he put out there. Globally, 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 countries report on the fiscal with a manual. So, Chairman, I will share the manual with you, and I think I have a copy with the manual. I brought a copy. I'll give you the manual. And um, the manual indicates how countries uh, deals with their, deals with the issues of 
debt reporting or fiscal reporting. The chairman, in the case of currently, the world is using Government Finance Statistics Manual 2014. Government Finance Statistics Manual 2014. And this manual is not alien to government of Ghana. Ghana has been reporting our fiscal in line with this manual since Adam. I'm surprised that all of a sudden the reporting has changed to something that is not globally accepted. And that is why the IMF in their own document had said that best practices recognize that this should be treated above the line. And this is in line with the manual. Mr. Chairman, I share the manual. It's a very bulky document. Since we are now in paperless regime, I don't want to waste money and print it. So, Mr. Chairman, I will share the soft copy with your clerk now. This is a document that deals with how reporting should be. It is not for someone to show us how the reporting should be. It is a global manual, and everybody ab abides by that. We, we have copies of the transcript. We will be giving opportunity to we'll have a look. And of course, obviously, the finance minister is also here with his lawyers. So obviously, they are listening. So. Thank you. I'll, I'll leave it there for now. Yeah, I'll leave it there for now. The the Honorable Kwame, you may do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Honorable Atufosin, would you be kind enough to turn to the paragraph before this one? Yeah. By what I want to find out, what is the source of this document? Um, if you may, I have the budget statement before me, so I'll take you through the budget statement one by one and refer you to the budget statement where the source is coming from. Mr. Chairman, to start with, let me start with the 2018 budget statement. Oh, is this an extract from the budget and which year's budget? Okay. Every single, every single data is coming from government official document, coming from budget statement. And, Mr. Chairman, you agree with me that when I said, I said fiscal data from the Ministry of Finance website. So whilst we are here, I have access to internet, I can take you to the Ministry of Finance website now and point to where all these numbers are, where I picked them from. So we can do that right away and you can know exactly where it's coming from. Let's, let's deal with the question. On the top of your head, without taking us through the tomb you are talking about, are you able to tell us 2018, um, mm. two, 11 point whatever, 21, 9, whatever, are you able to tell us this is from here, this is from here? If you can't, that's okay. Can you tell us? Yeah, I can... Um, the deficit as reported in the year uh, at 3.9 is in the 2019 budget and the media review of 2019. If you are to look at the um, appendix 3C and 2C of the budget statement of 2018 and 2019 media review and the budget, these numbers are there for everybody to see. Appendix 2C and 3C of the, of the budget statement. Again, the, the financial sector. Who, who is, who, who should no, finish thought, what? I thought he was explaining. Uh, Question that I asked. Is this data something that Honorable Atu Forsen had prepared or it is already part of an existing official document? That's what I want to find out. Okay. I asked the question because you actually color some places with red and whatnot. And you are using this document to contradict the uh, finance minister's position. So we must know the source of this document, whether it's coming from you or it's an official document. That's why I um, um, To start with, these documents are official numbers published by the government of Ghana. All what I did was to take those numbers and represent them in a manner for everyone to understand. So this is your document? So it is, it is my presentation. No, but the document, the numbers are coming from government official document. And I've made reference to the budget statement, Appendix 3C and 2C of 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. And you can check them. I have copies of the budget statement here. If you want me to take you through, I will take you through. And you can also find these numbers in the ministry, on the Ministry of Finance website under fiscal data. Every year, they 
pit and it's there for everyone to see. So that is where I took the numbers from and these are official numbers. The ones that I have colored is to show clearly that what the government of Ghana reported and the red to show what they should have reported. Because for example, the energy payment, they treated it as amortization. Amortization simple means debt repayment. How could you repay a debt and this debt where well, this that, that's supposed guess, to reduce guess, your debt guess, and all of a sudden. I guess that's not his point. Add, point add, is really, to your wait a minute. He said, Paul, that where did these numbers come from? I think he, he is quite happy with that. I think I'm happy yeah, what to you hear are, from you that yeah. they are your numbers. Even well, though well, you extracted them from other documents. Well, no, let's that, that's let's that's it. No, that's no, the answer no, I got no, from him. Uh, if you would want to. Let's be fair with our, our colleague. I'm not sure that's the point he's making. He's saying that. Even though, he no, says that these documents are his presentation. Mm. And that he had extracted the numbers from. That's a, that's I, guess, I guess what is important. What, what is important is that he says these numbers, though are presented here by him, are not his numbers. He said they managed from official. Well, when he said borrow, uh, he extracted them from government documents. You know, I, I think he's got the documents over there. He referred us to those. Uh, so, also yeah. for your information, also for your information before he comes in, also for your information. The government since 2022 budget, and that's before me, and the 2022 media review, and let me refer you to 2022 budget, Appendix 2C of the 2022 budget. Appendix 2C of the 2022 budget. And the Appendix 2C, 2C, 3C. 2C and 3C. Yeah, those that's are all from uh, 2022. And yes. Huh? Yes. Appendix 2C of the 2022 budget, page 234, page 234, under other, under other expenditures, government had said that going forward from 2022, they are treating all energy payment and financial sector payment above the line, adding it to expenditure, conceding that what they did was wrong and going further, going forward, they are going to well, that, that's your gloss. We tell, tell us. That's your here. gloss. Tell us the chairman, what is there. What the is chairman, there? Uh, what is here is that they have treated energy payment, energy payment of four point four billion and twenty four million as expenditure. The same energy payment once upon a time they said it's not expenditure and they should treat it as amortization. They have changed their position, moved it from uh, amortization now to expenditure. After we raise the issue, now they are saying that they are going to comply. That, that's with what you. Honorable members, uh, to be fair to the witness, we would have an opportunity to evaluate the evidence presented. Um, we should not, as a committee, be asking questions that sound as if we are buggering the, the, the witness. Um, we, should, we should ask questions arising out of the presentation in a manner that elicits the information for our evaluation as evidence before the committee. Uh, Honorable Kwame Imedu. Well, yes, uh, he, he's laughing because, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, yeah. You already said that you are part of the sponsors of this motion. You are part of the sponsors of the motion. You are, you are, accusing, you are accusing my friend of, a few minutes, a few minutes co ago. co chairman of what? Of what? So we, we should drop, be very drop, careful. Drop, drop, drop that, the, drop that, yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I ask mm -hmm. the questions to yeah. understand him better. I, I you actually that. make, I, I don't want to, I want to refrain from using the word allegation and by your choice of words, what was it, that the grounds that you are making and uh, the grounds you are making. So you, why, not, you, why, not, why not go on with the next question? Yeah, okay. go, yeah, so, Mr. Chairman, yeah, so. I, will, I will do that. But the, again, you also say that the finance minister exceeded um, the fiscal deficit by 2.8 of the uh, 2.8 percentage points of the GDP. And uh, your grounds for saying that, where do you have the figures, or is there any official figure? That shows that the finance minister had actually exceeded it by 2.8. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, if I may refer you to the document before us. Um, 
in the budget statement, if you look at Appendix 3C, the same, the same budget statement, the same budget statement, Appendix 3C. Which year are you making reference? 2019? Okay, so which one is that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, first okay, of no, all, to, 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 to start with, in the 2019 budget, the minister had reported to us in paragraph 99, page, two, page 23, that the fiscal deficit is 3.7% of GDP for the year 2018. This is according to the minister's document. Mr. Chairman, if you go to the same budget statement, the budget statement, the energy sector payment, instead of him treating it above the line, what he did was he showed it below the line, clearly excluding it from the expenditure. So an amount of 9.8 billion that, Ghana that, that is in his question. You've taken us through all of that already. Yes. There was a point when you said that there was some 2.8% um, of, of, of GDP. That's what I'm, I'm, that, that is where I'm going. For example, uh, in the year 2019, 2019, the minister had reported to parliament that the fiscal deficit is 4.8% of GDP. The IMF had said that per their standards, the world standard, the fiscal deficit is supposed to be 7.5% of GDP. In the staff report, they had said, that, uh, said to us that 2.8% of GDP were excluded from the expenditure. When they asked the government, the government treated them differently. One, he treated the energy payment as amortization debt repayment, but it's not debt repayment. It's an Present expenditure. Is where, in which document? So are the you document this from? is the budget statement. Okay. Yep. It is in the budget statement appendix two B two uh, C and okay. that below the line expenditures. The amount is there clearly. That's fine. And nobody can run yep. away from it. Okay. So well, if you want me to point the numbers to him, I can point them to him if fine. he has a copy of the budget. Statement. You're right. Yeah, go on. So, your last question, and then we can move to the next uh, honorable Am I member. limited to three questions? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, preliminary objection to the way this committee is conducting business. We are open to cross-examination, and you can evaluate the evidence we are submitting to you. But let this committee be reminded of the exact words in Article 82.4. It says, states, and I quote, a minister of state, in respect of whom a vote of censure is debated under clause 3 of this article, is entitled during the debate to be heard in his defense. The motion we move is not against any member of the committee. So we expect him to hear and defend himself. If this committee is reducing itself to doing that, let us know. Wait a minute. For Reducing the itself to doing what? I'm just reminding the wait, committee wait, 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 wait. of Article 82. Wait for a minute. Temperature. This committee is reduced. Harun, this committee is reduced itself to doing what? No, no, we didn't hear you. It wasn't clear. Harun, behave yourself. What do you mean by you? What is that? All right, we overrule you then. So, your next question. Mr. Chairman, uh, Honorable Atuforsin, kindly permit me. I'm not an accountant. Neither am I a finance person. But you suggest that the minister, improving your point, you are saying that there were some reports that the minister had reported above the line, yes. and then uh, he actually brought it below the line. I think you said instead of being uh, above the line, he brought it below the line. Right. I may want you to explain that, but the question that I want to ask is that, does it necessarily suggest that the minister is dishonest if an item is reported below the line? Thank you very is much. That I think what you want I, the committee I, to believe in? I, I, I think you have, you have really asked a very good question. Um, Mr. Chairman, the key point here is the statistics are there for a reason. The reason is you don't add to the debt unnecessary. Or you don't add to the debt at levels that the country will see debt overhang. Our problem today is as a result of high debt. Nothing more. That has triggered everything else. What I've done here is to track how this debt became debt. The 
that part. When the minister, if the minister had been honest with us by showing us what the fiscal deficit was, I'm sure Ghana would have remedied the situation long ago. The problems we That's are all in your today. View. The question of honesty and dishonesty. No, I mean, Mr. Man, he he asked me a question about honesty, and I'm, 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 I have to answer. All right. So I'm answering his question. So, so we are where we are we because he was progress. not upright with um, us. Uh, you wanted to answer a question. Get on with it. Chairman, my question has not been answered. If, um, uh, I if, thought uh, will be kind enough. What I want to find out, he would want the committee to believe that instead of going above the line, it has come below the line. And I'm asking whether it suggests that the minister is being dishonest. Is it the guideline of the IMF that should be used at all levels? Mr. Chairman. You want a yes or no answer Mr. Chairman, from let me ask a question before. Mr. Chairman, let, let me come in. Yeah. <laughs> The, 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 the chairman decided if we yield to the minority leader, he can't yield to you. Yes. Ch uh, chairman. Uh, oh, you take it to yourself. The, you yield it to yourself. The honorable animal had to take it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the statistics are there for a reason. That is why we have a law called Fiscal Responsibility Act. So I think you are not being fair to us. No, no, Mr. Chairman, uh, he that, asked that a question. Does that he's been honest or dishonest? Why can't he, you do... Mr. Well, Chairman, yes I have no, to build a point. Yeah. And my point is that, yes, yeah. he has been dishonest. Well, full stop, let's go. He has he's been there. dishonest he, because it would have triggered the Fiscal Responsibility Act Section 4. He will speak for himself. So, uh, Chairman, just on the same question, to answer the Honorable Anjimedu, Probably even in the course of the Honorable Atu submission, he stated without any ambiguity that international best practice. Indeed, the chairman even had to paraphrase him and ask whether this is international best practice. So this is our position. For instance, chairman, I'll yield again to Atu. I'm holding the PIAC newsletter, Key Lessons After 10 Years of Petroleum Revenue Management Act. And then if you come to findings, Chairman, this is significant. It states, for the first time since Ghana started receiving petroleum revenue in 2011. Let's see the particular page no, there so we can make notes of it. Yes, uh, PIAC mm -hmm. newsletter. Year and uh, page. PIAC newsletter issue to December, July to December 2022. So the media. Your, your friends all seem to have copies, except to those of us who are not your friends. No, I'll give you a copy. <laughs> you know that. You know that you. It's, and I, for the first time since Ghana started receiving petroleum revenue in 2011, the Disassembly Common Fund received an amount of 32.38 billion. Following the 2019 decision of the Supreme Court, in the case of Pudo and Ayeni versus the Attorney General, they didn't add Ayeni though. However, the disbursement made was 174% of the ABFA. 1.74%. 1.74% instead of the 5% specified in the Supreme Court ruling. Another discrepancy that you should take note would lead evidence to it. And the Jubilee report, and again in the PIAC report, of the 100 million U.S. dollars, which is meant for Jubilee, which is in an offshore account, I'll lead evidence to provide that. We got approval to be able to do that. Because in the subsidiaries of GMPC, which was in your committee's report, you never added Julie Holden as a subsidiary uh, to continue. Thank you, Chair, with your indulgence. Uh, to do. I, I think he has answered the question. Uh, Honorable here for you, you, you have your hand yeah, up. Mr. What Chairman, you? thank you for the opportunity. Uh, leader and the proponent, you have quoted from the PIAC reports. The PIAC report is not in evidence. Would you want to tender it in evidence? We said so. We said so. We said so. Be because of the numbering... We will say so, and we will submit so in evidence. Thank you. And to continue. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes. Council.
unless there's no PIAC report. This is a PIAC newsletter. Once again, we are extending the fishing net. I think we should, we should bear this in mind. That's noted. Thank you. We oh, tender the actual oh, PIAC report. Yes. The same thing is repeated um, in the report. I, I think, you. you know, for the benefit of the efficient dis, uh, discharge of our, you know, functions as a committee, um, since you and the uh, Honorable Minister are here, uh, maybe you should take down a list of documents that have been omitted, and then we can make, we can make an order for them to be supplied at the close of, um, of the hearing. Because but, you will have an opportunity. Chairman, that is exactly the point no. that we are revisiting. Uh, no. Consistently, the... they are saying that this will lead us to a wild goose chase. Right. Consistently, that's the point they are making. Yes, but we, we, we uh, arrived at a consensus that they should sit in, listen, and be able to respond afterwards. But wait a and so, let me clarify. What, Aru, did you say that this is replicated in the other one or that one is replicated in this? Yes, this paragraph is about the same wording even in the PIAC report itself. Yeah. I therefore will submit same in evidence. I thank you, Chair. You submit which one in evidence? This or the PIAC report proper? The PIAC report proper. So let's the, take purpose, the PIAC report and take this one out. You see, Chairman, I'm not sure that you want to determine how I think. Well, no, because council is strenuously objecting to thoughts. our presentation of this their documentation. This is a document I'm referring to. PIAC newsletter. I said so. In the evidence of what I will rely on without any contradiction, I said I will rely on the PIAC report. Thank you. You said two things. You see, you, you said we are directing you on which one to choose against the other. But so far, I'm not so sure. No, no. We thought we were supporting you. So what is it that... Yeah, so now what? We are, we are, which one do we put in evidence? The PIAC report? The paper I submitted to you is already in evidence. So what have you this submitted? Is additional to the list of you asked me the first primary question. What do you intend to rely on? Sure. So read it. So what, you mean the paper, the list? Yes, it's well, already in evidence. Talking about a paper like and this one. I've just quoted a paragraph yes. in the newsletter, which is paraphrased from the PIAC report. Well, that's you. helpful. So I'm suggesting that we can that because his objection is to the introduction of this new one. So if you say it is in the PIAC report, we are happy to rely on the PIAC report and then um, uh, make, make some progress. Make note of where in the PIAC report that we get this uh, particular passage that you, you read or whatever it is. That Chairman, I'll do so. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, is our understanding that this will, be, will not be part of it? It will be excluded. Okay. Sorry, so, so, so Mr. Yes. Chairman, um, to conclude on my first point, um, the, my matter is that our minister responsible for finance misled parliament Wait, wait a minute. Presenting. Which one is it? You are concluding on which one? On, on item four. I thought you completed it. That is why yes, the they were questions. asking questions, so yeah. I had to. No, 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 four, questions. five, six. I think Sami has got some questions for, for you. Okay, okay. I just wanted to make my opening, uh, my closing mark on that one. So if she, if she has a, a point, you can. Yeah, thank you very much, Chairman. The publication that the Honorable Ejapa Mesa referred to. I have uh, an extract here, still on the website of uh, Ghana Web, dated 9th May 2020. The interview of Dr. Albert Tuna Mama to the Joy FM program news file. For our record, Chairman, the report states under fiscal deficit. The IMF country director said the IMF and the government of Ghana have different views on the calculation of fiscal deficit and they have agreed to disagree on it. He said while the IMF calculates fiscal deficit with the financial the government argues strongly that the fiscal deficit ought to be calculated without the financial sector cost and energy sector cost. The IMF country director therefore revealed that the 7.5 fiscal deficit for 2019 in their statement included the financial sector payments and energy sector payments, while the 4.5 in the 2019 budget 
does not include the financial sector and energy sector payments. The comparison that I see is comparing two different things on one side, and we are aware of the differences, he said in the interview. So I just want to place on record that it is erroneous for the impression to be created that the IMF country director has discounted or dispelled the very eloquent and forceful submission of the ranking member of the finance but committee. Actually, as my colleagues, rather, you put it quite well. Yes. What seems to, for well, those of us listening, is that it's a, a divergence of views. The IMF appears to have looked at it from a different spectacle, and then the Ghana team appears to have looked at it from a different uh, um, mm -hmm. telescope. So it's a, it's a different interpretation of yeah. the So but we it's, would not yeah, make it's, a it's, judgment yes. on that. The, the, the Honorable Japamesa earlier has sought to create the impression well, that, okay. that we'll, we'll these matters some... have been dispelled. Okay. So I just thought for but the record, this is, this, is, this is a house of records. Yeah, I have another question. Can the Honorable Ranking Member confirm that these figures you have provided here today are exactly what was contained? in the finance minister's application to the IMF for the $1 billion IMF COVID-19 relief fund when they wanted $1 billion from the IMF. Which figures did they use? Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, when the minister responsible for finance approached the IMF for $1 billion rapid credit facility, they used the data that converged with IMF numbers. Clearly, they did not use the data that they presented to Parliament. To the committee, I mean, the two of you are talking about data that you know about. Uh, could you confirm that uh, what so, they sent to this so, one is this so one? Yes, Mr. I can confirm Mr. that. Chairman, well, yes. uh, Mr. Chairman, to start with, I'll go back to the numbers. The data that they sent to IMF was that in the year 2018, Ghana's fiscal deficit was 7.1% of GDP. I take to mean the Ministry of... Uh, the Ministry of Finance. It's an institution. The Ministry of Finance. Then the, in the year the 2019... The, in 2019 budget, instead of the 7.1, authoritatively, the minister reported 3.7% for the so record. Even though, even, though, even, though, even though they had informed IMF that in the year 2018, the fiscal deficit was 7.1% of GDP, they told Parliament that the fiscal deficit was 3.9% of GDP. I also take it that when you say that they informed them, they the would Ministry have informed them. Yeah, Minister of Finance would have informed IMF. By, by way of documentation, the documentation is what I presented to you. Which is which the, is which the rapid credit facility document. Can I have it? So uh, what, what, when your Minister of Finance is writing to them, they write under... No, because they, under the document, they show the source. And they say that the source is coming from the authority, government of Ghana authority. So and that you will see it in, in, in page 3 of the document. So the question here is, the Minister of Finance misled Parliament, obviously by presenting different set of data to IMF and different set of data to, I, uh, to, to, to the Republic okay. of Ghana. Okay. And that is why we that, are saying that, that, is, that is, uh, that is uh, take, well taken. Uh, can we have your next question? Yeah, my final question on this uh, ground four relates to the matter I raised. As ranking member on the Committee of Finance, has inquired from the Finance Minister why on this particular matter he presented different sets of figures, one to the Parliament of Ghana and a different one to the IMF uh, when they needed $1 billion desperately. Yes, we have. I mean, several occasions we've raised these issues. Um, I had particularly raised it as ranking member with my colleague, Deputy Ranking, and other members of the committee. It is for that reason why the Ministry of Finance, led by the minister, had agreed that going forward in the year 2022, they would treat all these expenditures above the line. And that is why you will notice in the 2022 budget that all these expenditures all of a sudden has been treated differently. In the past, they used to treat it as if it is not expenditure, but today they are treating it separately. So they have accepted that going forward, this is the way to do it. 
support it. And this means that all these years, yes. they have breached the fiscal responsibility rules. Meanwhile, they were covering it underground. Okay. Honorable members, uh, any other questions? Um, Honorable Patrick Boama. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Chair, on ground four, Honorable Ranking Member, your ground four starts with the word deliberate and dishonest. But from what you've done so far and from what you've presented to us, you haven't been able to lead any evidence to support the fact that there was this dishonest misreporting by the minister. So you, you are agreeing that there is misreporting, but you think it's not deliberate. Is that what you're trying to say, sir? You say the unfairness in the question. Oh, because I didn't get him well, so I needed no, to no, get clarity in the question. So I can no, no. What he said was that he looked at what you, you, you put out there. You're talking about dishonesty and all of that. So he said at the end of the day, from what you presented, there doesn't seem to be any um, unfairness. No, any. no, because Honorable Harina, let me finish with this, please. Um, the, the, the key question is, there is a Fiscal Responsibility Act, and the act in Section 2 is clear that when Mr. a minister... Mr. Mr. Co-Chairman, I am prepared to make progress. That's your view. And when, the finance yes, minister will be no, here there to is, tell us whether there is, it is uh, honest or whatever. If, if I may land, there is a Fiscal Responsibility Act, and uh, there is a set of rules that says that the fiscal, overall fiscal deficit should not exceed 5%, Section 2. And the primary balance must always be positive. And it goes on in section four saying that if a minister exceeds it by one percent, I may have exceeded it mistakenly. That doesn't make it but the uh, argument is dishonest. That's the, the point argument that he was is, making. Knowing very well that you have exceeded it. Instead of reporting the right numbers, the minister dishonestly decided to treat certain expenditures below the line, obviously to evade the res fiscal responsibility act uh, you are adding even more to the evade and all of that no, Let's leave to, it at not that. to go uh, through you got another question yes okay okay still on patrick patrick yes those words you may disagree with the word deliberate and dishonest uh, without wanting you to answer between the parliament of ghana and the imf to whom does the minister owe an obligation of reporting accurately on the management of our public resources. We simply are saying that in a subsequent letter, you agreed the deficit of 7.1% to the IMF when, in fact, you reported 37 to the Ghanaian parliament. If I had used the word false reporting, probably that would even be stronger. So we, we are just talking about inaccurate reporting and for me the significant thing the honorable ablaqua and atu have done responding to honorable mesa is to appreciate that yes there was disagreement between methodology but the same minister considered to international best practice in his subsequent actions so that gives him out when in 2018 and 2019 he did not yield to the international best practice. So for a record, that doesn't make it dishonest. Uh, um, Mr. Chairman, I, I disagree strongly on that. You that, that yeah, dishonest. Yes, because you see, we, 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 if, if, if sure report, well, I mean, we will evaluate the evidence. And I want us to cross that bridge when we get there. But what is going around the table suggests that we need to clarify for purposes of the Ghanaian people. So if a minister knew or ought reasonably to have known that below the line reporting will understate the deficit and still went ahead and they did below the line reporting, understating the deficit to parliament, that is dishonesty. There can be nothing more dishonest than that. Mr. And Chairman. so we need we need to be we need to I, I don't I didn't want us to be passing judgment around the table. Mr. You know, Mr. but Chairman. no, but but of course, no, but of course, Mr. but of Chairman. course, but of course, but of course that is what is taking place. Honorable members Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, 
Mr. Chairman, may I? Yeah. Honourable Council. Um, with all due respect, I think it's a bit too early. Yes. To hear pronouncements. We, we, we have resolved the council. <laughs> so, no, so that, council, that, you are, you are comfortable when that, the pronouncements, are the pronouncements, yeah. and the and the and the insinuations are coming from the side that supports the but finance But you are not minister. supposed to take they sides. Are not but you are not supposed to take no, sides please, on these matters. Please, respectfully. Um, uh, council, I think we, we, re we resolved it. We resolved it, so yeah, we leave it. Uh, uh, Chairman, Chairman, let me just, let me just uh, yes. pose this because you are a committee of record. Take, for instance, a contingent liability of Sino Hydro of 48 million. This is dealing with what? What are we dealing with? We are still dealing with data. No, you data in respect of? Uh, 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 ground four. Now you report to the Parliament of Ghana that Sino Hydro is better, and that you pay for do, that loan of over six hundred million US dollars with bauxite. Probably next year, realism will catch up with the minister and government that your bauxite is still unprocessed. Your creditor wants his money for the 600 million US dollars. It will come to hit the public purse and the public will be made to pay. That is why you must accept that. When you come to parliament, and uh, for me, we stated it even in the debate, there are times that we are disappointed in ourselves and in the institution of parliament. If parliament approve a loan of one billion, billion in the name of butter, and in 2023, you don't have tomatoes in exchange for pepper. Parliament must accept that it is not holding and protecting the public uh, class well. So we've given you an example of contingent liability where you stated to the people's representative that on this matter, butter, exchange of goods for goods, tomorrow when the public is paying with hard-earned forex, you will appreciate what that means. I wrote, all of work. this is pretty easy expert facto, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. No, no. no. Uh, okay, please go on. Honorable Patrick Boma. Thank you. Chairman, for the record, the 2018 budget was presented in November 2017. For the record, the 2019 budget was presented in November 2018. At the time that the legislation that my good friend is citing had not come into force. So it's an inappropriate legislation that he's seeking to rely on to establish that the minister was dishonest. Well, I'm, I'm sure the lawyers for the minister will address us on that point. But so in fact, let's, chairman, let's, uh, no, let's, chairman, uh, no, let's not debate it no, around but the, the table. To force him, he read into your record the day the president assented to the bill as a Very fact. Well. Yes. He did. He did. Yes. He did. No, he himself said December. He, I said he said it. So it is not for Patrick to tell him what is appropriate. He did so. He said three months. Go back to your record. When he was talking, I listened. He said three months three days. later. Yes, I said he read. The date of assent is 28th of December 2018. And I said that was the day His Excellency the President assented to the bill. Go, go on. And I talked about the fact that three days after 2018, he breached it. And 2019 is where I'm even dwelling. 2019, he breached it completely. And the rules were suspended in the year 2020, not 2019. Very well. So please, uh, the, the Honorable Pama, you are done. Uh, no, Honorable Zeneta Rollins. Suspended in 2020. Please. Order, honorable members. Thank you, Coach. Uh, my, yes. my question is back to this table um, with regards to the fiscal deficit. Was there any communication subsequently from the minister to the House, given the difference in the figures that he presented to the Parliament versus the figures presented to the IMF with regards to the same budgets? There hasn't been a statement from the minister himself to Parliament. Uh, what we have done over the years is that we've always raised it on the floor during the parliamentary debates. Uh, ministers and members of parliament 
gotten an opportunity to speak to the fact. It is only until the year 2022, when the 2022 budget was read and changes were made, when the minister, as part of his statement, when he was winding up, made statements that suggest that he has changed from the previous reporting to a current reporting, when I raised the issue. Please go ahead. And given the reference document, was a reason given at that point for why that change in reporting had occurred from the previous budget to this, this current one? All what they said is that they've listened to us and they are changing the, the methodology. Very well. Honorable Zanato is, is, is Rollins. All that they said. Who, who, that they said? have listened to us and who, they've changed the methodology. Who, who is the, uh, at, the, at the committee when the issue was raised, uh, uh, that why the change in methodology uh, from below the line accounting to above the line accounting. They said they have listened and they have changed it. Oh, members, any more uh, issues relating to item four? Okay. Honorable Ejapame, sir. Huh? Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, I want to find out from uh, Honorable Ato Forsen whether he's aware that IMF ordinarily will sanction countries that misreport to them, whether he's aware. Mr. Chairman, it depends on the level of misreporting and whether you are in a program or you are not under a program. So under if you are under, if under Article 4, they will not sanction you. They, they will not sanction you. Uh, if, if it has to do with the uh, under a program and there is some prior actions you have to do it or there's something you have to do, you don't do it. Even if you are dishonest, they won't sanction under you. Under Article 4, no. no. I see. In any event, the period that we are talking about, Ghana was under a program. I want to find out from him whether he is aware in 2018 and 2019 Ghana was under an IMF program. Fact. Mr. Chairman, I want Ghana to find out, out from him whether he is aware that Ghana between the period 2017 and 2022 has been sanctioned by the IMF. Mr. Chairman, Ghana left the IMF program in the year 2019. The reporting as I'm talking about at the time end of year 2019 Ghana was not in an IMF program. And so this cannot warrant a, a, a sanction from the IMF. Very well. Chairman, just on sanctions. And uh, Chairman, we are talking about protecting public resources of Ghana and ensuring that we work in a manner which reflects the public interest. What the Minister of Finance have succeeded in doing is to take Ghana into a debt distressed country with unsustainable debt. Now, the IMF, board, the IMF board will indicate to you that where your debt is unsustainable, I'm coming to sanctions regime, where your debt is unsustainable, you are not likely to get board approval. And it affects the quantum of resources you are asking for from the IMF. You want three billion, they will look at your debt. And if it is not sustainable, so uh, Mesa, the sanctions may not necessarily be we have punished you. A denial where we are today as a country, if we do fail in getting an IM intervention, that will be fatal to the future of this country. That, that will so be the results of what Atre is talking about, the 2018, 2017 no, so We are one. just saying oh. that sanctions is not like a carrot and stick hypothesis where you are given a carrot. We are saying that the stick may manifest in a board taking a stronger position against them because these figures will ultimately affect our debt threshold and how they relate to us under a fan program. Thank you. Um, what, what is the point? Mr. Chairman, I, I would all due respect to the uh, minority leader. This statement is purely speculative. My statement or question was to the effect to the accusation of misreporting by the government of Ghana under the stewardship of the finance minister. And I wanted to find out from the Ghana proponent has, whether has been Ghana for had been sanctioned for misreporting. Yeah, then his answer if was if categorical. I, if I, that yeah, that no. no. Yeah, sure. So, Thank you. Any question? No, I'm Good. fine. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, okay, Chairman, even though no sanctions, at least it compels corrective behavior by the minister Ma of finance leader. in his subsequent Ma budget. At this table, the bosses are not you. The bosses Mr. are Mr. the Chairman. two of us here. You know, so let's wait when we get to the floor. Mr. Yes. Mr. Chairman, yes. 
says. The no, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute. Um, honorable, I'm here for. Yeah, check the stuff for us. We have the technicians here. Yes. Chairman, thank you for giving me the opportunity to ask just a, a question for clarification. Uh, Honorable Ato, in your presentation, you alluded to Section 2 and Section 4 of the Fiscal Responsibility Act. And you stated clearly that a breach of Section 2 is a ground based on which Parliament may pass a vote of censor on the Minister. I want to ask you whether sanction or no sanction by the AMF, Parliament under Section 4, based on the breach, can proceed to censor the minister responsible. Parliament of Ghana does not report to IMF. Parliament of, of, of Ghana obviously relies on the laws of Ghana. We pass this law. The law mandates us that if the minister breaches rules, he has to be censured. And I'm going online in line with what is before us. Act 982 is clear that when the minister breaches Section 2, more than one percentage point, he may be censured. And that is the basis of our grounds. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The Honorable Atu Fawson, you may now move to um, uh, uh, ground, ground five. Uh, just one innocuous question to Honorable. On um, whether the GFS manual you spoke about, whether there are any items that will have to be reported either below the line or above the line. Is okay. there anything like that? So it's just if, a simple if, question. Um, um, if you look at the GFS manual um, under paragraph 4.53, it, it, you, can, you can see below the line the definition is there and ab ab above the line definition is there. And, and by the way, what is I've, I've GFS? The, uh, Government Finance Statistics 2014. That is the global manual that countries use in, Ve in fiscal very, policy. Very well. Yeah. Now, can you now move to para, um, five. item five? Um, Mr. Chairman, item five, our grounds is that there has been fiscal recklessness leading to the crash of the Ghana, which is currently the worst performing currency in the world. Mr. Chairman, the reason why our currency is depreciating at such a rapid rate has to do with the debt overhang. To the levels that our debt has now become unsustainable and investors are panicking smelling the possibility of debt with default. Obviously because of how the fiscal has been managed over the years. Mr. Chairman, clearly, clearly, from the slide that I show you, we are seeing that Ghana's fiscal part since 2018 is the worst among 46 sub-Saharan African countries. So if you are to compare the fiscal part of Ghana in the last four years, we happen to be the worst in the entire sub-Saharan -Sub African region, 46 countries, if you compare it. And I will show you what has happened to our fiscal since 2017. I'm on record to have commended the Minister of Finance publicly in Parliament and the Hansard best me out that in the year 2017, they did so well on the fiscal by staying true to the fiscal consolidation. But you see, they lost the way from the year 2018, when this below the line and above the line started. At that point, Ghanaians and major stakeholders felt that, honestly, Ghana economy is doing well, whilst in actual fact, we're not doing well. Because people often look at the fiscal deficit as the path, the fiscal path, and draw conclusions that they are adding to the debt based on the fiscal part. But unfortunately, because the overall balance was understated, people were not paying attention, and as 
to ask myself, how did we get here? And I've always said that we got here because the fiscal has been understated over the years. And that is why we're not paying attention. And you could see that from 2018, that we did of over 7%. 2019, over 7%. 2020, during COVID, we did 17.2% of GDP, the highest in the sub-region. And then apart from Seychelles, that did 18%. Almost every other person, uh, 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 every other country, we, 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 we spent far more than them. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, let me take you to what countries did. And this is the 46 African countries that um, have gone before, through. Before you do... I'm looking at the five again. I, I would have thought that your emphasis was on the crash of the Ghana city. Is that no. it? Uh, um, look at the five. I, I, am, I am making a point. Can no. I, I first of all talk of the fiscal recklessness? Leading to, leading to, leading to, to crash. So I, have to, I, I have to make the point on the fiscal recklessness as the reason why there was a crash. So, for example... I've listed here the 46 African countries. And you will notice that, you will notice that Ghana has um, run fiscal deficit in excess of 50% over four years. Over four years, since 2017. In fact, 2017, we did well, so since 2018. So 2018, Mr. Chairman, you notice that Ghana happened to our fiscal deficit was higher than most countries, 2018, 2019, 2020. In the year 2020, and this, this, oh, this again, data is coming again, from World what, Bank. What are, yeah, what are this data is coming from World Bank. Where, I pick it from the website source, of the World Bank. World Bank, World Bank yes, from, from the web, website of the World Bank. The African report. The African report from the World Bank website. So in the year 2020, you could see that apart from Seychelles, Almost every country, in fact, in the sub-region, no country did fiscal deficit above 7%. In the entire Africa, Ghana was the second highest, apart from Seychelles. Seychelles did 18% of GDP in fiscal deficit. But in the previous year, their fiscal deficit was 0.9% of GDP. And then the year before, in the year 2018, their fiscal deficit was 0.2% of GDP. However, in the year after, the year 2021, attempting to disrupt your train of thought uh, keep focus please i don't want to even though i've said that i'll be happy if you are derailed but keep focus um <laughs> when you talk about uh, the physicals and the physical deficit and all of that let me let me understand my elementary uh, conception of uh, this matters this this result from what expenditure uh, Expenditure. High, expenditure high expenditure to do the roads to do the water the railway whatever the, whatever the expenditure uh, is the, what's the name again the fly uh, fly over over the what is the name uh, remind me those who know the fly uh, over the honorable the katie Honorable that, Katie, no, no, let me is that this what is macro. Talking I'm, I'm talking of high-level expenditure numbers. If I'm, you, if you spend that. more than your means, you yeah. crash. But it's for those things, is that it? Uh, I don't know what it is for, but I'm giving you the headline, uh, the expenditure levels. Uh, I don't know what it is for. Okay. Chair, I thought when you were outlining the list, you had the National Cathedral, the SDI Secretariat, NAPCO Secretariat, the bloated government, uh, and then corruption. It's all part of it. The Auditor General's report. So it's a, it's a tall list. Uh, yes, yeah, 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 yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, you, you, you. Mr. Chairman, first, I'm dealing with high level macro numbers and um, what this means to every economy. And if your fiscal part is not sustainable, you eventually find yourself in a debt trap. Unfortunately, Ghana's problem today is debt trap. We have confronted ourselves with unsustainable debt due to the fiscal part we have created since 2018. And that is what I'm trying to uh, explain. Mr. Chairman, every single country in the list that I've provided, 46 sub-Saharan African country, if you look at the part, Ghana is the worst. In the year 2018, in the year 2020, in particular, when Ghana had to see an election and obviously also confront with COVID, we overspent our budget in excess of 17% of GDP. One would have thought that as soon as you find yourself in 
a situation, you will decline. In terms of subsequent year, you have to do fiscal consolidation to catch up. Unfortunately, in the year 2021, instead of us to go through fiscal consolidation, we saw a government that still want to continue with the part of fiscal recklessness, fiscal populism, by creating additional expenditure. And you can see that the shells that actually saw a fiscal deficit of very 18%. The subsequent year, they reduced their deficit by 7 percent. Put, put it on there. Okay, everybody is listening. A I mean, whole of Ghana is listening. Why not put it in the layman's step? Because even some of us are struggling. So why not put it in layman's step? Listen, instead of the government cutting down on the development of infrastructure, there was a government still insists on building roads, so, building this, doing this. No, no, schools, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. That. Don't, don't worry. It, instead of government, uh, uh, instead of yeah, government yeah. cutting down on frivolous expenditures such as National Cathedral yeah. and the that they decided to go uh, on the overdrive. The chartered jet travels. Is the chairman inviting us to provide a list of the, the reckless expenditure? I'm not listening to my co-chair on this. He's trying to advise me on the point. I'm not taking. But one second. Yeah. yeah. No, no. No, no. He would, no, no. It's okay. He's a co-chair. He can always come in. No. In the scheme of things, I don't know much about the cathedral, but in the scheme of things, I don't think when you talk about big items that you're talking about, you, you, you are trivializing your own argument because I think in the, 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 the scheme of things, this doesn't. But anyway, the point I make is that you talk about is worth $400 why million not dollars, the government Mr. Chairman, cut down for the record. On, the, uh, on the provisions that I've identified. Put it that way so the ordinary Ghanaian understands what we are talking about. So, Katie, uh, I, I think um, um, we, we, we happen to be the worst among 46 countries in the sub-region in terms of the fiscal part in the last four years. If there are no and, questions, we can and, go to the six. that is the reason why we are where we are. Oh, okay. That's good. So, this is fairly short. Uh, if there are no questions, are there questions? Yeah, Doc. Thank you very much, Co-Chair. I think um, just following your train of thought, would it be possible for the committee to be provided with any documents regarding certain expenditure that you're referring to? Uh, you made reference, Chairman. You've made reference to the cathedral. You made reference to a few uh, other... Uh, yes. Uh, my, my, my colleague, the Honorable Okujeto, is the MP for the cathedral, and I'm sure <laughs> he will... He will. He will, he, will be, he will do justice with uh, that. Oh, Chairman, the Honorable Ranking <laughs> Member has, uh, has, has reduced my stature. I want him to add chartered jets as well. Not only uh, National Cathedral, <laughs> but chartered luxury jet travels. It's, it's also my area of expertise. Uh, so, so I, I'm not on No, no, Honorable, 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 I think that you are disrupting the, the flow of evidence to the committee. Uh, Honorable Zenato. Yes, so Chairman, before he continues to the six, just for the record of this committee, the Honorable Atufosin is leading evidence that there is a strong nexus between your fiscal policy, your monetary policy, and the strength of your currency. And that if you do not manage your fiscal well, as is not being managed well by the Minister for Finance, that's why interest rate is going high, and that's why the depreciation of the city is going high. So for the record, we are saying that fiscal irresponsibility, unjustified life size of government, and its associated expenditure have contributed to this fiscal slippages, which is affecting the performance. Thank you, Chair. Well, no, go Chair, once again. Harold, we heard all of that. What we didn't hear, though, was any reference to the COVID and to the crash in the international world. We didn't hear about the rise of the dollar. We didn't hear anything about uh, of that nature. Who wouldn't allow you? You, allow you, allow you have the whole time. You have been yourself. interjecting me every second. To make sure <laughs> that you have a free flow. <laughs> What's your problem? You so, have all the time. If you so, want to start again, I so, asked you specifically, are you done with the five? You said yes. No, because you keep interjecting me. At all, since when did you become uh, kind of anxious about I know because me. you are. Yeah, so uncle talks, you shut up, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah so, so yeah. Honorable Katie. Honorable uh, members. Mm -hmm. uh, is your question answered? The Honorable uh, Dr. Zanato Rollins. I just wanted confirmation of the fact that he can furnish the committee with the relevant documents to buttress his point on the issue of financial recklessness. Mr. And Chairman, you, and Mr. Chairman. Co-chair may reference to... Um, 
I'm not yeah. done. Yeah. I thought she had finished. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the co-chair made reference to infrastructure and mentioned roads and hospitals, and which is... Was it, was it off record? I wasn't, wasn't off record. Off record. Thought, no. Yes. Yeah. All I'm trying to do is to have some clarity on specifically what he's referring to, because we need more specifics to be able to make an informed decision and report back to the plenary. Okay. Honorable Enimadu. No, but now back to council, because I thought he had some objection. Objection or something from council. Yes, um, Mrs. Chairman, I think this is the very issue that I was referring to. We are now being invited to ask the proponents to provide more documents. Right. And I think we need to be extremely careful about this. Thanks. We, we will define the nature of the document that we are asking right. for. Yeah. We will we'll try and define yes. it. As they make reference to documents and tender them, we'll make sure that mandatorily they will be made available to you I took note of a World Bank report, Africa report, which is not, you know, on the, on the list here. So um, you do well to tender that document to the committee. Yes. Um, um, honorable uh, Enimadu, and then uh, I Honorable Ahinefo. I may associate myself with the question that Dr. Zenato asked, and I would want to draw the proponent's attention to what, how paragraph 5 is couched. Fiscal recklessness leading to the crash of the city. And I would want to support what she had requested for, that if you can get a detailed expenditure which would lead or point to the committee that the ministry was... Thank you. Very well. Honorable Atu Fosin. Chama, you know, before Atu Fosin came, you know, this morning when I arrived, Chairman, I shared a proverb with you and Honorable Animedu. I said, if you are pounding fufu for a blind man, the best way to assure the blind man that you are not eating the fufu is to be whistling. You have to be whistling whilst you are pounding. Is the city crash or not crash? We have done our whistling. Uh, Mr. Chairman, he's overruled. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Chairman. Who, who, who are the... Who, who are the uh, yeah. Yes, so he's, yes, they will provide the documents, the, the figures, the specific expenditure. Yes. Uh, honorable. No, the, no the, the specific expenses. I, I think for, it's, for, it's instance, for, for instance, so. the honorable minority leader earlier on tendered a warrant yes. in respect of the cathedral. That's an expense. Yes. And, and that, that, that is where part of what builds up to the expenditure that you are referring to, isn't yes, it? Yes. Yes, so it, that, it, that is the nature of the evidence that would uh, want you to tender before the committee. Well, Mr. Chairman, when, Very you specific. Say, when, when you say fiscal recklessness, I mean, it looks as if members are trivializing the issue to just expenditure. Mr. Chairman, fiscal management is a combination of revenue, expenditure, and tax revenue and financing. So I, prefer, I prefer that we however, are, we however, are mindful no, of our no, addiction. I, when you say that we're trivializing... No, no, because we, we are... Okay, I redraw no, that. Yeah, I redraw that, Uncle. I redraw that. Um, I redraw that. Um, but we don't need to just concentrate on one leg of fiscal management. My point, my point is that when you run fiscal deficit four years in a row, amounting to 56% of your GDP, higher than sub-Saharan African average, in fact... No country among the 46 African countries has run that kind of large fiscal deficit. In quote, you have increased your debt by that magnitude. You made a point. So therefore, so therefore, so therefore, you don't overspend above your means. If you're a young person, you start life and you don't have money, you overspend above your means. That's recklessness. If there are no questions. Yeah, go. Yeah, coaches. Uh huh. Thank you for the opportunity to ask a question. By ground five, it is categorically stated that Ghana City has crashed as a result of recklessness and is the worst performing currency in the world. You have been a, fan, a deputy finance minister. During your tenure of office in 2016, with particular reference to the exchange rates, 
to dollar. How much was the rate? And now, what is the exchange rate? Um, thank you very much. Um, the, the Ghana city at the time we were leaving office in 2018 at the central bank was 3.9 to one city in 2016. Um, in, the market, in the market is 4.1, some places 4.2. Today, 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 and this is public knowledge, you can get it from the internet interbank. Um, today, in the interbank, the city to the dollar is about 15 cities. 4.8, 14.8, 15 cities, depending. Um, the city has depreciated year to date in the last 10 months. Uh, Atu, hold on, hold on, right, my colleague. I think we're getting a bit anxious about this. Um, the question was asked whether there was an interjection, whether he is to be cross examined or something. And then we asked our question for clarification. But if it is, uh, he's happy, uh, he thinks I've come to his age. Now you, you say that, well, uh, why is, why is uh, Solomon, isn't it? That's why I see you laughing, you know, because I'm helping you out. Yeah, I don't think uh, he's under, under any responsibility to be cut off answering this sort of question. If we ask for clarification, that is fair. But pointedly, during your time, this is your time, well, it's for now, he's not a finance minister and he's not, he's not under any sense of motion, you know. So, um, let, let's be uh, conscious about the question that, uh, well, maybe, maybe, maybe we overrule that one. Yes, no, uh, 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 the, he has answered the question already. Uh, halfway through it, it's overruled. So, you, you don't no, let me start a question and in between you truncate I, me. I Listeners will not appreciate the point I, I, I was thought, making. I thought I should overrule it. It's overruled. Yeah. So you are, that answer is expunged. Yes, another question. Mr. Chairman, uh, I hear the ranking member list 46 countries which have performed better than Ghana. I want to find out from him whether any of these countries that he listed, their finance minister had to deal with energy sector debts that he inherited when they came into office to manage the affairs of their various countries. I want to know from him whether any of the 46 countries that he's listed had to deal with this huge energy sector debts in those countries. Uh, uh, some of those countries didn't inherit ESLA, which provided buffer for them to deal with some of the energy sector debt. Which ESLA energy sector level you have even collateralized up to 2035? But I'm to respond may, to may, the may other issues. Chairman, chair. some of these countries are at war. War to that level of they have to buy huge ammunitions and their revenue base has derailed, yet they perform better than Ghana. So, Mr. Chairman, you, you, it will be wrong for you to zero in into one, one item and conclude. If you are to take critical look at these countries, Ghana is far better off than most of these countries that we made reference to in terms of all the economy issues, indicators, and everything. Yet, we perform worse than them. So, his argument, Mr. Chairman, I respectfully disagree with him because we cannot be a country that is performing worse than a war-torn country. Isn't it also part of a, a reflection of their economies, I mean, the level of development in their respective countries, isn't it? Um, but, Mr. Chairman, that is why it is wrong for one person to isolate one expenditure. Under the previous administration, we had to contend. We did not treat it below the line. We contend with a major expenditure, single spine, that the previous administration inherited from then President Kufour's government, yet it was con contained and paid for and accounted for appropriately. We had to contend with doing so. We had to contend with that and oh. did a major, major investment in doing so. We did not treat it below the line. Which resulted, so that which is, is not which an resulted issue. in what uh, uh, that, my that did was not talk, was that did not resolve the issue. You are doing so and so, your plans. So, so, Mr. Chairman. Even the energy payments. Otherwise, uh, what the chairman is talking, you wouldn't let me come. No, because uh, because I'm speaking, you you, you have yeah, not asked me to stop. But the chairman has the privilege of no, uh, just stopping ask me to you. No, stop, and I will stop. So stop. No, okay. when I finish, Thank you. you Thank you, That's chairman. Right, you know, so I have also stopped. So he said I used only one example. Let me give him another example. Can he tell us any of these 46 countries that their finance minister had to expend to 
clean their banking sector? Any one, just one. I, I prefer that we, you, you put it as a suggestion that isn't the case that quite a lot of this also went into the cleaning of the decision. I will, I... I'll, be, I'll be guided accordingly, Chairman. Very well. Very well. And, and, and lastly, Chairman, uh, I'm sure that the ranking member of the Finance Committee is very much familiar with the Public Financial Management Act, uh, Act 921, uh, the proponent of the motion. And if, if I may refer him to Section 22 of the Public Financial Management Act, because I heard him say that um, uh, the fiscal management uh, relates to revenue expenditure and financing. Okay, um, if you, I may refer to Section 22, uh, approval of annual budget by Parliament. 22. Parliament shall, by the 31st of December of each financial year, consider and approve A, the annual budget and the correlative work plan of the Government of Ghana for the ensuing financial year. B, the appropriation bill and C, any other bill that may be required to implement the annual budget. And 22.2, the annual budget approved by Parliament takes effect from the first day of January of the ensuing year. Now, having quoted the provision in the law, I want to find out whether the Parliament of the Republic of Ghana in December of 2021 complied with the provisions of this act and if the parliament did not comply would it not agree with me that the failure of the parliament of Ghana to comply with the provisions of the law has contributed to the fiscal situation that we find ourselves in as a country thank you parliament of Ghana of which you are a member yes um, yes right. uh, on, honorable, honorable, uh, honorable member, with all due respect, I think that the question should be overruled. And I say this because the Constitution um, clearly um, entrenches the concept of separation of powers. The executive branch of government has its uh, functions clearly stated in the Constitution. The Minister of Finance exercises management of the financial resources of this country on behalf of the president who under article 58 is a receptacle of all executive authority if that authority results in any situation of mismanagement of any I mean, of fiscal recklessness the executive branch must take the responsibility in fact it is not for nothing that the uh, drafters of the Constitution provided in Article 82.4 of the Constitution that ministers can be I mean, censured. If we took the logic of your question uh, to its conclusion, then it means that this exercise, this what we are doing today, is an exercise in futility, no, but it is not. Not entirely. It seems to be suggesting that Parliament may be a contributory factor in all that... Uh uh, chairman, we've taken note. If it's indicting parliament, if it's indicting parliament, let it be. We are individual members of parliament who have shared our view with you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if, uh, you, if you permit me, I mean, the point that I'm making is this. The provisions of the public financial management law is clear. Section 22 imposes a duty on parliament to perform three actions by a certain date. Parliament indeed approved the annual budget and correlative work plan of government for 2022. On, honorable, honorable, to honorable member, but failed with all due respect. With all due respect, your, implement the budget. Your, your, question, your question is overruled. Provision that your, we all you are take, living witnesses. Please to. take a cue from the chair. Your question is overruled. The witness is not uh, going to answer that question. Yes. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, um, uh, um, Hansard is my witness. I've raised is this issue of... The question high... is overruled. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Please proceed with your evidence. Mr. Thank Chairman, you. I, I will move on. I'll move on to the next item. Wait, wait, wait. Um,
the banking sector that I did not answer. So if I can answer that and move on. Well, which one is it? No, he, he raised an issue whether um, these countries in question, the 46 African countries, uh, had to contend with the banking sector cleanup. No, I think we resolved that. No, no, I, he, no, no he, it was a question. It. I, and, I re Chairman, it's important I answer. I rephrase it, and then he said he was guided by that, and I think we... So, we, so we, I shouldn't answer? Um, well... It's important to answer. answer to the, he says it's fine. Um, any other questions? Yes, yes Sammy. Yeah, thank you very much, Chairman. Chairman, I will be relying on the special audit conducted by the Auditor General presented to this House last week. Special audit report on the recoveries made from... We are not going to allow staff to come from uh, uh, whatever. Uh, let's fiscal. What is, what is this document? Special audit report. I'm using it to ask a question. No, no. Where is it? Where is it on this? Thing? It, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's Sammy, not, it's not we, been tendered in evidence. People can be pulling the staff from wherever and then be asking questions. No, 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 no chair. On no, that. no, no. No, chair. My, I just want you to know that my question no, has, no, no, no. We, has we, basis. I didn't think it didn't have a basis. In Proceeding from a no, report. Wait, wait, wait. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think we're getting enough of this. Um, one, two, three, up to 17. And then we added a few more to this. Council, uh, we added one. So that will be 18. Now uh, he has this freshly minted stuff from wherever it was pulled out from. And he's going to add to that. So if you want to stick to the document that we have here. He actually hasn't referred to this. Um, uh, Ato, did you refer to this particular document? You haven't seen yeah. it in your Yeah, life. but, but uh, Honorable Katie, I'm on, I mean, Honorable no, no, Chair. We would agree to the, the is fine. Uh, yes, um, mean, I think that, I think that members, members are entitled, as of right, to refer to public documents in order to ask follow-up questions. You know, so he referred to the Which Joy one? FM in, 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 as a predicate for his question on the, uh, the reaction of the, what, the IMF. Let me see, let me see. And he didn't even tender it. You know, it was not overruled. Council, you were happy with that. You want to object to this one? Well, I... Uh, I um, no, we Mrs. don't need Chairman, to put you, we don't Mrs. Need to put Mrs. you on the Chairman, spot. Chairman, if the question, Council, that, if the question Council, that is about to ask... Council, Council hold, it, hold your breath for a minute. Hold your breath. Put your thing... Put your thing. Uh, you can ask your question without reference to this, can't you? So, Chair, am I to understand that members cannot, control, control, cannot ask questions that. because the Honorable Mesa was, with, with, with was the reference. first to introduce well, a it, material, no, nobody, a foreign material, not on the list. We are not going to do that again. So, yes. this is the first uh, casualty of that uh, decision. I, 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 I hope Chairman is not Thank being Chairman. biased. And, and unfair. Uh, but the question really can still be asked without, without that document. The matter relating to fiscal recklessness. Will you classify clear cases of wastage? The Auditor General has just retrieved 2.2 billion from wrong pockets. Will you say that those infractions, irregularities, wastage, or fees is part of the fiscal recklessness that you are referring to? I, I just want to be clear. I, I think you have a very important point out there. Um, when we say fiscal recklessness, frivolous expenditures are part of the recklessness. Obviously, wastage in the system is part of the recklessness and malfeasance. I mean, things that can be avoided. Some of the reports, when you read them, you ask yourself, what is happening here? So if you have all of this money going down the drain, in the end, it's the taxpayer who have to pick the liability and pay either through taxes or through other means. So this is part of the problem. Fiscal recklessness, I'm only looking at the high-level numbers how come we have spent so much as a percentage to our GDP or above our tax revenue or total revenue? That, for me, I think is something that we have to immediately flag it if we had known 
that this is the level of the the fiscal uh, de deficit that we accumulate. For example, for example, when government had to go through the the financial sector cleanup, the way and manner it was done obviously amount to recklessness because you cannot go to the bond market and borrow euro bond just to collapse a bank. You don't do that. Because when you use this kind of euro bond money for this kind of expenditure, when the time comes for payout, you have difficulty in paying out. So when we say fiscal recklessness, it's wastage, is the way and manner the fiscal is accounted for and the high level of the fiscal. Obviously, if it was high enough and they were aware, they would have taken position to decline. And that is why I made the word fiscal reckless. Okay, counsel for the finance Chair. minister, he has his okay. uh, uh, hand up. Uh, is he in relation Chair. to the yeah. question? I, yes. We just need clarity on the question because he specifically said the Auditor General has retrieved. So I, I, I really want us to understand what he means, how does he situate fiscal recklessness in the situation where he's saying the Auditor General has retrieved. I, we just want clarity on that. Okay. Um, so, okay. Um, since, Council, since you are not uh, part of this process, what I would advise is that you can raise technical legal objections to what is happening, but in terms of asking for substantive clarity of questions that have been asked, you do not have the right before this committee. I, I don't no, I no, no. Why but, can't he? No, because, because uh, Honorable uh, Co Chair, with all due respect, the Honorable Finance Minister will have a turn at this table. And if he does, he will now have the opportunity to no, no, make. It's a to make, to make he would have to contend with. And if he doesn't understand through his counsel, you mean they couldn't see clarification? Yes, that is what I'm, 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 that's what I'm saying. What? No, no, no. What? No. I, 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 I think, I think, I think we can. No council has been, no question has been. I think he's agreed that we can, we can clarify. clarify. Yeah, Chair, I can, I can, I can happily clarify. The Auditor, the Auditor General is reporting that they have set out to retrieve 4.7 billion. Sorry, which, report, which report are you referring 4. to? 4.7 billion. The report you don't want me to refer to. Well, so, but so why would you refer to a report so, I don't want you to refer to? So yeah. we, are, we are discussing fiscal recklessness. Yeah, sure. So you, you and, and, and my and, reference to this. And, if you and lose, my, I mean, and my question... Uh, yeah, I, so I, I can never be intimidated. You know, well, you I know. never intend to intimidate uh, the North Tongue uh, <laughs> yeah. maestro. I don't intend to. So, so, so make your point with that reference to this. So, so, so the question is very clear in my mind. Wastage, malfeasance, financial irregularities. The Auditor General is in pursuit of 4.7 billion. He's retrieved 2.2 billion. 2.5 billion remain uh, out there uh, that he's, he's in search of. And I just wanted to find out if that is part of fiscal recklessness, the fiscal recklessness that you speak of. Does it include malfeasance, corruption, you know, public funds in wrong pockets? That's, that's my question. Um, Sami, thank you very much. I, I, I think um, it's a fact that if we say fiscal recklessness, it includes all of that. The key question here is, are those recklessness done only at the Ministry of Finance? I do not believe it. I think it is the economy-wide. It's the government-wide. And most ministers of finance are corporate. So you can't blame only the minister responsible for finance. But, but the PFM Act empowers the minister responsible for finance to deal with it. And that is why the PFM Act makes more or less the minister of finance the most powerful minister. So he is clothed with all the necessary legal framework to confront his colleagues. So if he fails to do that, obviously he has engaged in fiscal recklessness. And so, in so the wait, end, he's wait, the wait one that should be. That has to be dealt with. Wait a minute. So he's not here because he's caused all this mess, but because he hasn't really held those people, he hasn't imprisoned quite a lot of those people responsible. Is that the point you are making? The, the, the fiscal powers are vested in him. 
in the finance so, minister. So is, is but effectively being held to account for... Of course, if, if the Minister of Roads overspent and the Minister of Finance pays, it is the responsibility of the Minister of Finance, even though the act was committed by the Minister of Roads. Because the PFM Act empowers that only the Minister of Finance that can give the financial clearance for the Minister to engage in that act. Uh, so so I mean, whether, the, and if the Minister question, fails to do that, it makes the Minister of Finance can deal with him. It isn't the Minister who is responsible for this. It's the whole economy. It's government-wide. The gaboodle of, uh, of it that makes, it, makes uh, this whole thing what it is. Well, well uh, except that, Mr. Chairman, if, if you had allowed me to uh, reference that report at page 35, you see that the Ministry of Finance has a 1.6 billion CD question to answer there. Do you have another question? So the, the Finance Minister is not particularly exonerated Do you have another in, the, question? In, in, the, in the matter. Yes, I, I have another question. Make this no, I think let's make some progress. I have you not exonerated the Minister every of Finance. Issue. No, I've said fine. he has all the powers under the PFM Act to confront it when it happens. His failure will mean that he has to carry the cross. Yeah, my final question, uh, Chair, on the ground five. The Honorable Ranking Member of Finance made reference to using bonds for the financial sector cleanup. My perspective is quite different. I want to find out in terms of the policy choices that were available to the finance minister and to the government, the route they chose, was that what was in the national interest so far as our fiscal management of the economy is, is concerned. The, the policy choice that route, which cost us, I don't know, the figures keep changing in this house. I don't know if it's 25 billion or whatever, whatever it is now. Uh, what do you have to say about those policy choices so far as fiscal recklessness is concerned? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I yeah, think the Honorable, um, uh, Honorable Atuforsen does not run the finance ministry. For him to be able to answer this policy-related question, I strongly believe that it's an it, yes. It's a, we, we views. Policy choices. Policy choices. We are discussing fiscal recklessness. Chairman, um, I have a strong view on the way and manner. What you did six years ago, uh, which way and would have the, the, the financial situation. sector cleanup was conducted. I have a strong view on that, the chairman. Um, countries, countries, countries have to contend with banking sector issues. There have been best practices on how the financial sector cleanup could have been managed. In the UK, they had to go through similar when Royal Bank of Scotland and Lloyds Bank had to be bailed out. In the end, they paid back. Ghana decided to go on a route where the burden on the banking sector cleanup was transferred to the taxpayer. I think that was wrong. I think that Ghana could have decided to go for other ways in dealing with the banking sector issues instead of what they did. That was a policy, wrong policy choice. Okay. Thank you. The Honorable are here for. Uh, Honorable Ato, you said you do not borrow money for banking sector cleanup. How does this amount to relevant for the finance minister? If I'm the minister of finance, there's no way I was going to borrow money to collapse a bank. I wouldn't do that. So that is recklessness. No, no, uh, that, yeah, that, that is his answer. That's a witness's answer. So, uh, Honorable Zenato, do you have a question? Or Honorable Yimadu? Okay. I, I, let, me, let, me, let me do my last one, then we decide on our next. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I thought, Sabi, you were talking about bonds and all the other things. He himself was talking about bonds and other things. Yeah, uh, uh, that's right. The reason there. Uh, Ato, was ever any bonds raised in the year 2015? Uh, Harud, why are you laughing? Don't anticipate me. 2015. Um, which uh, raised uh, about uh, one billion for the country, one billion dollars. Recall that 2015. Some 
some bonds were raised and uh, of course uh, 2015 yes, yes, yes. you recall that i and it's the case that uh, your interest on it was about 10.75 percent um, uh, why do you keep on laughing coupon, coupon, uh, 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 10.75 is that it correct uh, and it is suggested as the most expensive whatever which was ever raised in the country. Uh, is, there, is there anything to it? I disagree. Uh, okay. But you know what I'm talking about. I disagree. Yes, I know what you're talking about. Uh, okay. Um, when uh, there was a World Bank guarantee of 400 million and then there was the interest payment of 750 million. That is why I said I disagree. And you were still having to pay 1 billion which is all what the finance minister has had to be paying, which has led to the figures that you identified out there. You disagree with everything. Mr. Chairman, uh, the previous You disagree with everything, don't I disagree you? because... I haven't asked for borrowed, answer. You borrowed, disagree with everything. I'm making a point that this administration... Uh, so why not ask, answer my question? You disagree or you don't disagree? I disagree with you. And yeah, I'm, full I'm, stop. I'm, That's I'm giving right. you further and better particulars. I'm not interested but in you your You have to need it. You will need it. Because this administration, within a period of four years, had borrowed from the euro bond market in excess of 12 billion U.S. dollars, as against yes. the previous administration that borrowed 4 billion U.S. dollars. So, so we are talking of how reckless it is, and that's why I have to give you those information. No, no, no yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't the quantum. My interest wasn't the quantum. The 1 billion, I wouldn't have thought uh, so significant in terms of the figures. I'm talking about the, what you call the coupon rate. Uh, you have 7.5 percent uh, return on that, and all the work back guarantees and all of that. That's what I'm talking about. So, can I explain that? No, you can't. You. It. It. It will. Answered my question. It, no, he it will be. It he said be, he disagrees. No, no. He it will be. Disagrees. It will be grossly unfair to take his answer. All right. I think it's important because you are comparing. I will, I will allow you. Go yes. on. Let me hear you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Bond prices depend on the time of issuance, and there are so many factors that account for bond prices if you want to compare bond prices obviously you have to look at the real interest how much you are paying for example recently government had to issue zero coupon bond and the question you have to ask yourself so what is the real interest rate of the uh, uh, real coupon of the zero coupon bond simple put i borrow today i get paid all my interest and tomorrow when the time comes I will end up paying only the, uh, the, the principal. What is the real interest? I think it is more expensive than the 2015 bond, and that is my answer. Yeah. And Chairman, so, just, there, the, just there on the banking sector, the Honorable Atu Forsen and the proponents of the motion are strongly arguing that there is an opportunity cost to an expenditure of $23 billion for a banking sector cleanup. If you recall, the Association of Bankers called on Excellency President Nanadu Donka at the time and said that some interjection of some liquidity of some amount not exceeding $1 billion, if it, at the time, and we'll tender it again tomorrow, Daily Graphic reported this in their front page. They said if we got $500 million, you could save a number of these banks. Now, you said no, categorical, that you will not help them with any liquidity intervention. You ended up spending 20, 23 billion in a clean up, where they said that many of them, if they got a certain modicum of support from government, so it's spending 23 billion, and people have gone home comfortable with people's savings and investment. That must be of concern to you, Chairman, that you refuse to support those who are in need. Don't forget the families who have died as a result of they being asked to go home because once the bank is not working, mother and child, wife and husband in crisis. So you refuse 500 million, 1 billion to save the life of some of these financial institutions and you are happily saying that we should celebrate you after spending 23 billion, which you are not prepared to report. That's that's what he's, 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 he's emphasizing on because this was below the line. So if you left our banking sector expenditure of 23 billion, who should bear the brand for it? Same public, same taxpayer. Those are the contradictions. We are pointing out. Uh, 
Thank you. We'll come back to the banking thing. Let me, at all, for sake of completeness, um, uh, just recite out the nature of the point I'd have. On a, on a chair? Yeah, Chair, uh, I raise this point of order uh, so we will be guided. Um, I thought that the proponents are to make out their case and we will give an opportunity, a fair opportunity, to the Honorable Finance Minister to respond. And that the tenure of the Honorable Atu Fosin, when he was Deputy Finance Minister, is not what is. What, 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 yeah, but, but the quest, but continuously, the questions coming up about bonds he raised, it's, it's as though he is under scrutiny. Yeah, for example, the question of the bond that I'm raising, not particularly about his tenure of office, about the fact that a particular bond of this nature was raised in the country. It just coincides that that was at a time when he was in office. Well, yeah, 2015. So if it happens to be the case uh, that he was in office at that time, so be it. But, but I'm not putting it to him that he has done anything wrong or anything. I'm asking for clarification. Indeed, I was going to do further clarification. And as the chairman talking, you don't debate with the chairman. Block his light. Block the light so that he's not able to speak. Ato, Ato, let's talk to Mr. Ato, listen, this is what I was going to say. See, it is, it is here. It is some message at part for whatever. Uh, that's all right. Chairman, chairman have some, chairman have some liberties, you know. One of the most outrageous bonds out there must be a one billion lent to, one billion dollars lent to Ghana in uh, 2015 at 10.75 with a 400 million guarantee from the World Bank. A buyer of the bond in 2015 is already guaranteed to get 1.15 billion and they are still owed 1 billion and 860 million of interest payment. A simple matter of you, you understand this better than I do. You know about this and whether it makes sense or it doesn't make sense. Mr. Chairman, you the, can, person, the, the person who uh, sent the tweet... Calm down, all of you calm down. To go on. The, the person who sent the tweet did a follow-up tweet the next day. And I, I, I thought you can read that one as well. Yes, on, on the same one. So the same person. This is a tweet. Funny enough, your uncle's glasses sees just one point. He doesn't see the other one, you know. So, uh, yes. Uh, so what is your comment on what is your comment on this one? Uh, my answer is that there's a follow-up to it by the same person. I, I'll have a look. And at if you can read it, it, it will, it, it will clarify and, uh, your position. I'll try and then read. Yes. V very well, uh, honourable here for chairman mm. or co-chairman. My my issue is that what is good for Peter is good for Paul. That that is not always true. I, it's not always I, true. I, Ask a question based on 2016 exchange rate figures as compared to the exchange rate now. Chairman overrule this particular question. So I least expect my chairman to go contrary to his we own don't play the same rules. Asking we don't play by the same rules. The chairman have their own rules and the members have their own no, rules. No, yes, the rules are the same. Uh, Masa, so, chairman, as point to that from your own record. Uh, uh, Council, are you that brave? <laughs> Go on, no. to, to actually buttress his point, the reference that um, Okuja Tuablako was making yes. in the um, block, auditor's block, report. Blocked by chairman. Blocked block by, by chairman. Yeah, I, I believe that if we do our job properly and members uh -huh. of parliament are asking questions and making reference to documents that are uh -huh. within the public well, domain, when, when they we'll should to, be permitted. When we get to the they, floor, when we get to the floor, he would have it. I keep it, he will get to the floor. Chairman, Any more, no, uh, on the official records, it must show yes, that the no. reference that he made to the yeah. document, because you're making reference to something we don't know. You said chairman are allowed. Yeah, sure. Um, chairman are allowed. Uh, uh, Japan also yeah. men ma made mention to something online. No, no, this no. is a, a no, document see, that is an no, official no, document. No, 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 I appreciate, the, I appreciate the point you're making. Consistently, lawyers uh, uh, of the finance minister are complaining that, see, originally when they came, we almost aborted this, and the uh, sanity broke out, and uh, we decided to uh, go the way we are going. They were saying that we should restrict them to the particular documentation which were going to buttress the charges that you had made. Um, which, for me, made a lot of sense. But in the end, it looked like it was going to be difficult. So we 
decided that we weren't going to allow all of us open rain to just rain in this, bring this document, bring document. We listed about 17 of the documents. Suddenly, he puts one Chairman, that is act. for the proponents of the motion. Uh -huh. But if members are questioning certain things and all can right. make okay. reference okay. to documents... When we come back to do the other ones, I'll give you the document and you can raise you it. You must, you must, you must indicate whether it's being allowed or not, because for yeah. the record, the counsel of the, the, the minister raised the question about where the document, the information... Um, Sami was referring to us from, and it's from a document that you are refusing to allow as evidence. I'm yeah, not, I'm not changing my mind on this one. So no, um, let's see what we do. yeah, with, with all due respect, uh, co chairman, don't get involved in this, co chairman. Don't get involved. Let us, yeah, deal with I think, this. I think it's, I we are, think we it's almost important, completed especially with the, with the, the, the five. We, we are at six. We need, yes. We are six and seven. Let's on, make a decision on honorable, to honorable members. We may have, we may have to take a vote on. Uh, the issue whether and the extent to which we can rely on public documents you know uh, well let's let's see let's see let's see how uh, or, or how your license the license okay the, the honorable Haruna you you have you have a, a uh, your hand up chairman i wanted to do a quick one on three and is on item three because uh we're going back to three yes we're wondering what to do with the six and seven no he will conclude on that three is very straightforward i'll deal with it illegal payment of oil revenues in 12 show accounts in flagrant violation of article 176 of the 1992 constitution. why do you think that's going to be fairly short let's decide on what to Under do one given the evidence and i'm well, wait a minute. You Arun, a short evidence. With us. there's this suggestion that we may want to go for a break or whatever we no. have thought that wait a minute, wait a minute. We have the only items outstanding were the six and seven. If you add that one to it, we're going to have three more items. What is no, the No, that one, the there is $600 million Sorry? standing in Jubilee Holding, which was not paid into we the We can do 20 minutes for the remaining again, two. section three of two, the PRM. See, I'm act, talking and he's not listening and he's going on and on and on and on and on. The three and then the other ones. Uh, the Honorable Atufosin, are you suggesting that you can do the three and the remaining ones in 20 minutes? Yeah. Mr. So Chairman, uh, I indicated uh, that the problem? my job is to take you through item four, five, six, and seven. Ah, so far, I've done no, four and no, five. No, no, no. Six and seven, Wait, I can lump them together and give you one. We are hearing medical conditions why we should have break. So let's take a decision. To continue tomorrow. He says it's going. Yeah, he says it's going. Yeah. So, so what do we do? We can do... Uh, we can Is there, is there a sense of the committee that we break for one hour and come back at four o'clock? Sorry, let's get it right. I can see true. Two hours. No, one hour is okay. Honorable Minority Leader, I crave your indulgence. One hour, one he was hour saying that we could finish it in 20 minutes, yes. but there are those then, who said that they need to get break. Yes. Very well, very well. Thank you very much. Uh, Council, we crave your indulgence. 